Yeah. I felt like I was at a concert in an elevator. She turned it up so loud, my fucking ears were bouncing off the side of my head. I don't know. That, that, that's usually not what I use, but <laughs> I was like, I forgot which one I used, so I just, I just got one, and I was like, gotta roll with it now. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> it's going now. We gotta roll with it. Yeah, I was like, fuck, uh, that's the wrong one, but uh, we're gonna, we're just gonna fucking roll with it. Oh man. Oh. As I was telling you backstage, you got some fucking haters out there, man. They, it's like you kicked your fucking dog and um, ran over the cat and all kinds of shit. Haters, you mean? You talking about haters? Haters, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, I got. Yeah, I've done pretty well in the hater department. I got a few. I got quite a few. I earned them, you know. I got them all uh, honestly. That's for sure. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. And and the three people that are watching right now, <laughs> uh, if if you are if y'all want me to talk about street outlaws and shit, I mean I might I don't I, I don't know but I'll be honest with you I'll be totally lost because I don't watch it. Same. I don't watch it. Uh, I, any of them uh, the the track shit the what's the other one called the 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 race race streets of America or whatever it's called. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that one and uh, you know the 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 other one. I, I there's like fifty of them now. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, to me, to me, when it came out, it was pretty cool. But then they pretty much Kardashian it up, and you know, there's hey, there's there's not there's not very long. There's not much time left. For television you know so i imagine they're trying to slam it all in there you know before it's over but you know i heard they're casting for like uh german shepherds that can drive cars and oh, yeah. they're looking for like uh geriatrics that can they can street here. race and stuff I'll i mean they're some dogs and shit <laughs> street oh, yeah. outlaws street outlaws dogs street <laughs> outlaws pets pets oh. and street outlaws man uh it's been a long time, man. I mean, it has. It has. I mean, from back back from when, you know, we used to start doing shit back in the in the in the real days. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Uh, it's been a long time since those days. I still remember uh, when we were at the steakhouse and and somebody said that, oh, was it Mark that said something about you were on pinks and and you got all ran yeah. out and shit and. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, you remember when we got uh, chased by the snake down in Houston? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, that, I do. That video popped up not too long ago, and I, I, I think I got with YouTube and had to try to take them, try to take it down. I was scared <laughs> to death. I still, I'm still not cool with snakes, 100. percent You know, well, I'm not even like a 0.01 percent cool with snakes. Still, I've snake. had to deal with, I've had to deal with enough like human snakes though that now like biological snakes are you know they're not that bad anymore mm, i don't know i'll take my chances with some humans because <laughs> you can always tell humans to fuck off and and all kinds of shit fuck it yeah that's true so uh you know i i do watch your i do watch your your youtube channel that, oh, that, thank you. Hey, I, I do, thank you, sir. I do, I do watch. I do. That, that's that's what I watch. I don't watch uh, made-up TV. I watch. I like watching real shit. And uh, seem like y'all are having a good time and and enjoying it and kicking it. And that's what it's supposed to be about, man. I mean, uh, just chilling and 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 having fun. And it looks like y'all y'all are having fun, especially with the the little red thing back there. Yeah. No, man. To be honest with you, we're having a fucking blast, dude. Like it's it's you know, I don't know. It's just uh same thing as like when I came down there, you know, not so long ago. Like, I don't know, man. Everything is just it's like just this giant weight lifted off of you, you know what I mean? And it's like you you've been doing something so long and it means so much every day that you forget how much it doesn't mean. You know what I mean? Like you forget how much it really doesn't mean anything, you know? And so like, you just go and you just keep going and you're just like, everything is, you know, 
means more every day. This this one is more means more than the last one. And so, and next thing you know, it's, you're ten years into it, and you're like, you finally just say, okay, I'm I'm, I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna do, I don't know, go do something else or whatever. And then it's like, it's just you just start to realize how much everything else means, you know, that you didn't even remember anymore because when something is that important and you're that focused on it and you're trying to make a life out of it, you know, then like everything else becomes all you, you have to sacrifice everything else, you know? So like just, just even having like clean cars, you know what I mean? Like that's the weirdest thing ever is like for five, six, seven, eight years now, you know, the only time I would be able to like, feel okay with like washing the cars and you know getting them all looking good and cruising something around was if i had if i knew i had three months off or something you know what i mean because you know you you shank one race or you show up late to one deal and it's like man if i wouldn't have done i wouldn't have washed that one car you know what i mean i could have made it or i would i would have had more time to work on the car or whatever so it just gets to the point where you're like you just give up pretty much everything for that thing you know yeah when you uh when you come down here last time did it did it bring back some memories oh dude it was the good, intense the it good was, old days yeah it was intense and you know you're you come so far but yet you know what i mean like i know there's so, there's so many cliche things you could say about it but like seriously like i've came so far from that first cash days you know but still yet when i was pulling when i you know when i hit when the 35 splits, you know, that's when I always start feeling it in my stomach, you know what I mean? And it's still, man, as soon as I hit that, as soon as I start heading towards where everything's popping, it's like, oh man, I can feel it, you know? And then before you know it, dude, it was like, it was just like I never even left, you know? It was, the only difference was I didn't have a car there and I was just watching, but man, it was, uh, it was freaking awesome. It really reminds you of, you know, reminded me anyway of, why i even started doing all this shit, you know yeah and uh nowadays the uh i mean it it's it's definitely changed in the last 15 years or so from you know kind of when we we kind of got got into it hard uh cars have gotten a lot faster and they're i remember when you first showed up y'all were basically the only one on small tires back then and there we were all on big tires yeah yeah and then and then the roads have changed now now i mean you can't other than people going on tv and stuff you can't find a big tire guy around no more yeah it's uh it's such a niche like you know when we first we were doing cash days with you guys and stuff and we were doing all the you know different races together and traveling or whatever it was like there was five or six big tire guys in the beginning that were just, you know, fast as fuck. So like all the small tire guys were slowly converting to big tire because, you know, because of guys like me and you or whatever that were just saying, Hey, we're not going to put rules on the shit. You want to race and bring whatever the fastest shit you got, you know? And then, and then the TV thing happened and it, it became such a niche market that anybody that was fast or had the ability or money or whatever to be on big tires on the street went, and tried to make a life on TV show, you know what I mean? And so then it kind of left this vacuum in the street, you know, like it was just like, there's this group here and the group here and group here. And then it was like, Oh, they're gone. Just like they fell in a hole, like they're gone. And then this guy fell out and this guy fell out. You know, it was like, it just left this weird hole in the street. And then that hole got, that void got filled by small, badass small tiger. Basically the same shit we were racing but on small tires, same kind of car, same power adder, you know what I mean? But just on smaller tires, you know? So, and, you know, it was, I mean, I've, you know, I've never really been super big about going back to small tires with my own car, but like, it's exciting to watch, it's exciting to do, to tune, to drive, whatever. Like, you know, it's super, uh, especially car counts are huge. The people are excited, you know, and it's, it's more relatable, you know, although, some of those cars are pretty fucking fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and it would cost a lot of fucking money to build a fucking competitive small tire car right now. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at like Beater or Ryan and, uh, you know, even Boost is kind of coming back, you know, in it. Um, but, 
they're just as fast as I mean, they're faster than they were, but now they've got more data. Yeah. They've got, they've got data for years and they just look at a surface and they're like, they, oh, it looks like this surface and they'll go from there. Yeah. How much, yeah. how much data is, is needed for like, for like you say so you've been everywhere you can, you've got data for everywhere on your, on your, on your car. You can pretty much just dial up anything and just go from there. Or Man, like it's, you know, it's, these things are so weird. I seriously feel like, I feel like the deaf guy in the mall, you know, I feel like I got hearing aids in. Huh? Uh, <laughs> um, it's not really like that. I don't know, you know, maybe it is for some, for some guys or whatever, but for me, I'm, I've all, I'm changing so much on the car all the time, trying different things that you can, you know, I'm, I never put in an old tune or go, and say, okay, I was here two years ago. I can pull that road up or that path up or whatever because, you know, in those two years or whatever or even six months, the transmission ratios aren't the same. You know, the the whole back half may not be the same or the motors move back further now or, you know, the, the car weighs a little bit different now or whatever. So, and then, you know, it's always something, you know I mean? You're always doing something to it. So like, but what you do, what you start to, to pick up is when you look at trends in data and you say without trying to get too nerdy here but when you look at the trends in the data you say like okay you kind of start gauging roads by numbers so like oh that's asphalt it's a number five asphalt you know to me it's like you know it's pretty bad asphalt road so you know on the worst road you need to be uh you need to be leaving at eight pounds or whatever and then you need to be you know, 18 pounds at three quarters of a second or one second and just roll it out real slow. And then, you know, as far as the boost controller goes, and then with timing, it's just mostly trying to get it to make boost on the brake. Once I let go of the brake, you know, mine pretty much has all the timing all the time. So, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, uh, it's really just trying to read the road as far as the, the biggest help is the bumps. You know what I mean? So if you have data on an, on a road that has a transition or a bump. Now that might be sharing a little bit of secret here, but that is a massive help. If I can go look at a road that I was on and say, okay, there was a bump at, you know, 0.3 into the run or whatever, you know, and then or I can look at the road and say, okay, it looks like there's a bump at 300 foot or whatever. So, you know, that helps because then you can make sure you made the next gear change or whatever before that bump or you can make sure that you're not applying power during that transition or whatever, but especially like on the real street stuff anyway, like the turnouts, you know what I mean? If there's a parking lot and there's a turnout that will unsettle a car so quick because mm -hmm. the car's coming out of the parking lot, the drag, the, you know, loose dirt that the, that the roads push off the road, they drag it right back out. So usually that part sucks, but, but as far as like data helping you get down a road, man if i have more if i have two or three licks or if i'm in a shootout or something where you're going rounds then there's nothing better there's not there's no part of the car there's no tool in your pocket there's nothing you can do or buy that's better than watching the data that night you know what i mean but yeah, as far as like going back in time and grabbing data that's just it's so hard because you change so many things you don't remember you know you can get your good baseline yeah, but now on the TV stuff, though, on the TV stuff, yeah, you can pretty much just find, you know, you find your number, whatever tune-up. You find the tune-up that went the fastest ever on that road, and you load it back in there, and you turn it down a little bit or whatever, shift it a little earlier or whatever. But, yeah, but yeah, on, on you know, when you show up to a road that you ain't never been down or tested or whatever, it's, you know, it's about the same either way. Yeah. So and now, uh, you know, the small tire deal, it seems like the lanes are – it even because lanes have always been kind of an issue in the real street stuff because you know traffic and everything else so like when somebody tests on the spot they'll test in the right lane or whatever or like that one spot in texas uh, eagle or whatever where they the left lane is after a turn and so everybody tests in the left lane you know what i mean so when you get a spot like that then the lanes are unequal but with the small tire stuff it seems like it really makes a difference like especially well, you got, if like yeah you little you got little bit tires well, yeah, and then the two guys, you know, the two guys when you first get there, they do their burnout way over here or way over here or up here, back here, whatever. And so then, 
you know, you got one lane that you guys are doing the burnout in the same place every time. And that lane comes around way quicker than this over here. It's all spotty and stuff. So that's one of the things we noticed at the cash day that we went down there and watched you guys do. That was one of the things that we noticed that we're going to have to, if we're going to do this, you know, again, we're going to have to get serious about figuring that part out. Yeah. So your definition of small tire size. Oh, fuck. So, okay. <laughs> I personally feel like a 29.5, 10.5, non-W is a small tire. But Thank every you. time I say that, Jackie hands me tampons. And she says, you know, it's because she feels like a 28 is the only true small tire. <laughs> is she from the Northeast or something? She's, She's from, from Chicago. <laughs> there you go. That's close. I know. Enough. That's close enough. <laughs> she probably likes prep too. <laughs> no, she actually likes the asphalt <laughs> stuff. Which I, I, you know, I would much rather show up somewhere it's got a little rubber down. But she would. She's rather. She's all about the asphalt stuff. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a big wherever you go, man. It's it, man. The, the Midwest is pretty much as that has a fine line of the twenty nine, uh, or versus twenty eight, but. Out west and out east, man. That's 28, man. I they, I guess they only know how to build Mustangs there, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a big, honestly, I think that's a big part of it. Honestly, I think that the bolt-on crowd or the, you know, the the, the guys that buy a, a car that's halfway done or most of the way done or whatever, and they don't, you know, they don't want to cut the tubs out of it or mini tub it or whatever. And, you know, they just want to peck around in the laptop. You know, those guys are, you know, they don't want to put 29 fives on because they don't really fit good on stock Mustangs and G bodies and stuff. So, whereas, huh? And CTSV, whereas the guys here in Oklahoma and Texas, man, these, these fucking idiots will get a sawzall out. They'll cut the fucking back of the car out in a heartbeat. <laughs> We're going to make it fit one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. That one orange Mustang way back in the day in Texas, dude. I remember that guy. Oh, I don't Eddie. remember his name, but he was wild. And uh, I remember he came out one night on 28 or something. It was him and, and uh, Eric, the big baller coop. He did it one time too, where we showed up down there and they were cutting the fucking quarters out because everybody was on 29 fives and they weren't. So they were putting them on at the rate. Yeah. And I was like, man, y'all are wild. Man, uh, the the days, can you believe we still hit that one road? I ain't going to say the, the road, but uh, where Dave got put in jail, we actually still hit that road. Yeah. Yeah, we we actually still have that saw, road. Yeah, I saw some videos of it. Uh, I've been watching a lot of those, um, a lot of the bigger races down there, like the um, baddest man on the planet and stuff like that. You know, and I was watching some of those videos, and I was like, "That's the fucking road right there." Like I remember that road. Like, and I can always tell because the left lane is total shit. Like it's still total shit to this day for some reason. Every, everybody goes out there and test in the right lane. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's one of those spots where the right lane gets the testing. You know. And I yeah. think there's like back in the day anyway, there was like a tree over the right lane. And so it was like, even if you hit the left lane up, the the weather would beat the left lane out and the, the right lane would stay good under that shade tree or whatever. So it was, yeah, it, it, it's been so long that, that now the trees are covering both sides. Good, good deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the left lane still, it's still okay. Kind of, the left lane needs some love. So yeah, I remember that deal. That's where Dave, uh, Dave, went to jail for trying to take the right lane from janitor. <laughs> no, I told his ass, I said, man, don't pull out. I ain't got security out. And I know. I was there. Pulled out and parked on the curb. Yeah. And, and he, like, he acted like he was, uh, he acted like he was the only one ready to race. He's like, I'm just trying to get this done. I'm just ready to race. And I was right there with him. I was fucking, you know, I was, I was helping him. But the, the reality is we figured if, if Dave got, if Dave figured if he got his car in the right lane, that when the janitor got there, he'd just pull up in the left lane and they'd race and they wouldn't have to flip forward or nothing. <laughs> and you told him, don't leave that in the street. If the cops come, they will take you to jail. I don't have security or nothing set up yet. And Dave's like, I'm just ready to race, man. And then sure enough, a cop came. Oh, man. I remember Jackie was standing on the curb. Jackie Knox was standing on the curb, whatever. And that cop said, you take one more step. You take one step off that curb and you're going to go to jail with him. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, and he didn't have his ID or nothing. No, nope. and, and they didn't have any way to get the truck out. Like they, uh, Jackie Knox had to. They was in jail. Jackie had to sleep at the impound lot or whatever to make sure nobody took all the parts off his truck. And then that somebody had to go back 
or somebody had to go back and get a driver's license or something. Didn't yeah, they? they had to go get the and the paperwork for the truck. Yeah, to yeah. get it out of impound. Oh man, man, good times, good times. Man. Well, hey, but, we all you know, know we, we you guys have come a long for. way. Everybody you know, says that you know. Everybody says that you you never change. You haven't changed. You're still the same, and cash is still the same. But you know, you guys are not racing directly at semi trailers anymore, which is cool. You know, uh, there's not giant holes in the middle of the road anymore that you have to dodge or you uh, know. Well, well, well. <laughs> maybe you still you still maybe. go to diplomacy or no? Yeah, but oh they actually God. they they actually redid the road. So oh, did they? Yeah, yeah, I remember when they, they did, Booster was telling us that he was like, "Oh yeah, there's a big square cut out of the concrete. Just straddle it if you get there." I was like, "What the fuck?" That'd be all right. That'd be and all right. the forum had big mounds of concrete in the road. Yeah, but that road that road worked though. Oh that man, road. buddy, <sighs> there was something magical about that road. There really was. That road has nine speed bumps on it now. <laughs> Does it I really? Ain't, I ain't lying about the number. Nine speed wow. on it. I'm thinking about doing a, a rental car cash days out there. You must you must purchase the uh, insurance on that. <laughs> are they like, like legit poured down or are they both? Yeah, down? they they saw cut and then. Oh, wow. Yeah, they made it. They put they put speed bumps up here at Cougar, but they, they just bolted them, them down. And yeah. of course, you know, they just yeah. pulled them up every night when they wanted to race and then forgot to put them back one night, I guess now. Now they're pissed off about it. Yeah. Uh, so, what? Uh, oh, yeah. Forum dragway. We used to call it Forum Raceway, but you know, dragway, whatever. And we had some good time out there, man. I remember yeah, the did. cops. When the cops showed up, we all went to the quick trip, and they were like, "Oh, it's y'all. We we're used to the kids. Yeah, young young girl go back." Yeah, you know, we know everything's taken care of. Yep, you know, it was a good time. I remember uh, who was it that had that that coupe that wanted to run Buddy out there? We want that guy right there. We want that guy. And I think he, I don't know if he was from Oklahoma or, or maybe uh, oh, like a 34, or, 34 yeah, or Ford Tulsa coupe or something. Yeah, Ronnie yeah. Pollard, Ronnie Dale Pollard. He wanted he wanted Buddy bad. He yeah, got he him, and then Buddy. Yeah, the one time Buddy, the one time Buddy made a clean fucking pass right down the middle, and it was against that guy. <laughs> he's in a banging gear, ass hand up in the air, and he's just banging. He's just slapping gears, you know. Yep. And uh, yeah, I, that was one that a lot of people don't know this, but Buddy was so influential in the beginning. Like people, like people think that you know there's certain cars that were flat black or whatever, and you know, and blah blah blah, blah but like. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, like he started that shit, you know, when it came to like high dollar street race cars that were like purpose built to, you know, and his actually was built to do double duty. Ours was we we acted like they were double duty, but they were just race cars. But his was like he could really drive, it, you know, and I remember that one cash days down there, we all went to a church like the day, like right after racing and we put my car and Sean's car and Buddy's car in a church parking lot, and 1320 took a picture of it or whatever. Yeah. Dude, that was legit, you know? Because it was like, I painted my car flat black because Sean and Buddy's cars were flat black, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and uh, Buddy's car was done before Sean's, but I don't think that it would, I think Sean would have went flat black either way, but but it was, uh, yeah, dude, Buddy, Buddy McAfee was like extreme. He was the guy who was like, over the top before anybody was over the top you know when everybody was still racing small tire shit he had a big tire liberty blown fucking you know street race car yeah he still got it as far as i know he still got it really forward. yeah he's still, that's crazy yeah he still got the car man the good old days man. yeah yeah that was back when somebody had a triple axle trailer we thought they were like fucking loaded rich like when Buddy pulled up in that triple axle enclosed, I was like, God damn, what's this motherfucker do? Yeah. And I was like, he'll, he's oil field. And I was like, he owns all the oil fields or what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, what happened with you and you and uh, Sean? Me and Sean? Are you all still buddies? I mean... I ain't got no hate for him or nothing. You know what I mean? We don't, we don't kick it or talk or nothing. No, you know, like 
every once in a while, um, I'll send him a text if I see, you know, if I see that he's doing good, I'll send him congrats. Or if I see that he's struggling, I'll ask him if he needs anything or whatever, and he'll do the same or whatever. But like, you know, um, it's one of those deals where if he calls me, I'll be there no matter what forever. We're just kind of, you know, that's kind of how we roll. We're family still. So, but you know how family is like, sometimes you fall out of touch with family, you know what I mean? So, um, it's just kind of, it's just like, we're, you know, we're just in different times and places, you know what I mean? Totally. So, uh, it is what it is. I, you know, I love him and he's, he's always going to be a big reason why I did, you know, a lot of the things I did, why I was successful at anything, why, you know, why I have what I have, you know, like a lot of it, you know, cause Sean gave me the you know, a chance before anybody did when I was tuning cars, like nobody gave me a chance to tune a real car. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we're talking like fucking late nineties, early two thousands or some shit. Well, no, I guess it would have been, no, it would have been after that. Cause I don't think he even, showed up here till like second cast days or third cast days so but yeah i remember like you know i didn't even just like when we went to the first cast days that you put on it was after the winter nationals in houston that jb won the first cast days you put on i didn't even have a trailer you know like my buddy uh striker he had to haul my car down there for me so that i could race in your race and so after that though when I, i met sean shortly after that or whatever and he told me um, cause I still didn't have a trailer by the second cash days, but he told me that if I helped him win a cash days, that he would give me his flatbed trailer cause he had an enclosed or whatever. And dude, I thought that was like, I was like, Oh my God, like that's, you know, no one's ever been nice to me like that, you know? And he was, cause he believed in my tuning ability or whatever, or, or, you know, whatever it was. So that's what we did. But dude, I mean, it took us a little while and we tested every day you know like it was non-stop forever and then when he finally by the time he finally won a cash days i had already i had finally got it my own trailer <laughs> <laughs> that was but, the one was that the one we did here was it the slow car yeah uh no uh, no uh he won that one with his uh mustang yeah with the, yeah. the death trap but no trap. uh no it was the uh I don't was it the one up one. there I think it was uh, yeah, it may have been up here. I don't remember I the was... first one that he won, but I just remember him finally, you know, him saying, you still want a trailer? And I was like, no, I got a trailer, but I'll take that blower, you know, because he had like a 871 roots or whatever that I was going to try and put on my Pontiac motor like a fucking retard. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. It was after that that, like, then I started getting more opportunities to tune other, you know, high dollar cars, which was fucking cool, you know, so. But we both got, you know, we both kind of uh, made our way together and, and we both, you know, got a bunch of opportunities because of what we were doing together. So it was fucking, you know, it was awesome. Some of the best moments of my life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Did, uh, now how much, now that's, this is, I'm going to hear, I'm going to listen to your answer and, and this is probably the reason why, but how much has the show changed your life going out in public oh in public oh yeah, totally, just, yeah. Just like just just going out somewhere say to go eat somewhere or just go kick it yeah. you um you know you have to you have to realize why you have the things that you have you know you have to realize why you get to race cars for a living, you know, and you have to realize like where you came from and how you got here. And, and when, you know, to realize that means you have to realize that it's because of, you know, the people that support you. So, you know, when you go anywhere, you have to remember that just because you may have signed 50 things or take 50 pictures on the, in the parking lot on the way in, not for this guy, not for that kid, you know what I mean? So, you know, you have to, you just have to, you just have to uh, appreciate every moment, you know? So, like, you can't have a bad day, like, if you're, you know, just trying to, I've said this before, but, like, if you're just trying to mow the grass and, like, you're in a sleeveless and you sling a belt off the mower or something or you need some, you know, some 
a string for your weed or whatever you can't just like run in somewhere and grab it and with you know your cutoffs and your fucking whatever you know like just looking like a moron you know you can't really do that anymore because somebody's gonna take a picture of you and then they're gonna be like oh man chief fell the fuck off did you see him like that's why i'm at the store the other day he looked like he was homeless you know so like you know you, you kind of have to can't really have a bad day you know so but but man at the same time like you know <clears throat> i wouldn't change that part of it for the world you know what i mean because the whole reason that I get to do any of it or the whole reason I get to buy string for a weed eater or whatever, the whole reason I got somewhere to mow is because of those people. So yeah, no, that part of it, it's changed my whole life, but it's all for the better, you know? Well, I'm not like that. That's the reason why I said no to the show back way back in the beginning, because I, I don't do crowds, man. I believe it or not, this motherfucker, he's kind of shy. This yeah. Guy, oh, dude, trust here. me. Yeah, I'm there with you. It takes, it took a while, dude. It took a while. It took a while because, you know, especially at first, you know, because at first all of it was a sacrifice. Like there was nothing coming back. You know what I mean? Like when you first, when we first started the show, we were making $1,500 an episode. You know what I mean? So like we're taking off work for six, eight weeks at a time, losing 20, 30, 40 grand at work to go do this. And so then it's like, the producers were taking time from us and then, you know, and, and then everything that we were trying to get caught up on was taking time and then the cars were taking time. And so then, you know, when you go somewhere and people are, you know, and you're in a hurry and people are talking to you or whatever, then you're like, you're like, you, you're like, why the fuck am I even doing this? If everybody thinks I'm an asshole, you know, especially if I'm not getting anything out of it, you know what I mean? But then, you know, then once people started to catch on to, uh, to who we were and what we were doing well then all of a sudden you know we started being able to make up a little bit of the time off or whatever and so you know and that's when it's like okay you know i got you you know what i mean like so but there's a moment there where everybody everybody was wondering why we were doing the shit you know what i mean but you got to do i kind of envy you in a way uh because you got to enjoy doing what you love See, I'm a little bit older than you, just just a little bit, just a little bit older than you. I always look, even when I, I do the same thing when I'm playing races, when I plan where I'm going, my life, I always think about the long, the long term. And for me, the long term was, man, I ain't gonna be able to fucking go anywhere. I ain't gonna be able to do nothing without somebody fucking hounding me or doing anything. And I was like, no, I don't know. I go up, go up north, man. Them guys, them guys are always fucking street racing. But, yeah, uh, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm out. I even talked to old lady about it, you know. And I'm like, she's all like, do what you want, you know. She's always do what you want to do. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. She's like, well, <laughs> all right, don't do it. It's uh, I mean, I, honestly, I don't know that, you know, I don't know that. Um, I don't know that you should ever envy me for it because I don't know that it would have ever been what you wanted. You know what I mean? Like there's, you know, there's just moments where, you know, where you sacrifice so much and then you can't stop because of all the sacrifice, you know what I mean? So it's like you get into something where it's like, if I stop now, then everything that I gave up, you know, everything I walked away from, everything I gave up, it's not like all that was for nothing. If I stop, you know? And so, but after five years of telling yourself that shit, then eventually it's like, fuck, man, you know, what am I going to do now? So, you know, like, it's just, a, it's, man, if you're going to be, you want to be at the top of something, you know what I mean? You have to fucking deal with it, you know, for a long, and just go, 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 and never think about what's coming and never think about if it's going to work out. You just got to go. And for some people, it didn't work out, you know what I mean? But for some, I guess for others, it may have, but. I don't know uh, if I had it all to do over again, of course, you know, of course, there's no way that I could say no. But but at the same time, you know, there's some days I wish up and I, I wake up and wish that that phone call never came. You know what I mean? Like, and so it's a double edged sword. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but that's like anything in life, though. You know what I mean? I hate to even sound like I'm bitching about it because I'm not, you know, but it's like it's just like with anything in life, you know, everybody's 
got something that you know could they could take or take it or leave it. it could go either way you know but it's yeah. just uh, a little different because i guess it's a tv show instead of normal shit or whatever but yeah i remember uh i think after we did our cash days here and then uh we did everything uh we went up to denton and i think nick and them they uh they scraped the track and everything and we were gonna we're gonna do a, a stimulated street race at the track but i was there uh, no prep and yeah i was there racing. and i and i'm like what i missed a calling on that because that was like the original no prep shit did did just like them and everybody every other car fucking wrecked and i'm like yeah. ain't nobody gonna want to fucking wad their shit up for fucking this shit yeah well look at it now look at it now yeah it's not like that anymore though you know what i mean it's like <clears throat> Can you, I, I can't even imagine if you took, well, you know, the group now that or whatever, if you take the, yeah. the, the no prep groups now, and if you took them and put them on that same surface right now, you know, it'd be, yeah, probably yeah. Be, I, it, it, it's a lot different nowadays, but back then yeah. was that 2007 or something like that. 2000 was a long time ago. Yeah. But yeah, I was like fucking crazy. Kelly fucking hit the wall and then pulled his fucking front brake lines off. Yeah, that, that, dude, was wild. that dude, he still ain't wired right. I, I think he's no, no. We thought for sure he was terminal. You know, we honestly, because we had just met him that weekend. That's the first time we ever met the dude. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, no doubt about it. This dude, his doctor told him he's got like thirty days to live or something. And he put this fucking Z car together and said he was going to drive to Oklahoma and street race or whatever. Like, there's, it's had to be what's going on. You know, so because the way he drove and the way he didn't give a fuck about cops and didn't give a fuck about wrecks and didn't give a fuck about roads. Like there was one spot that we were testing on up here and we were like, Hey man, it's short. You know, you can't go full eighth or whatever here, but you can get it after it for three or 400 foot. And he wasn't, he didn't even like go look at the shutdown, you know? So I was like, Oh yeah, no doubt about it. This dude's got 30 days. Like his doctor told me, <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's just going to get it all in, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's a wild dude for sure. <laughs> yeah. He's a good dude too. I mean, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, just, just talking to him and stuff. And uh, he's a, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's street to the core too. You know what I mean? He'll never like that's a that's another cool thing I like about him is no matter what happens, no matter because he had some cars that should have you know he could have went to the track with and made money or whatever, but he's street to the core, which is cool as fuck too. Yeah, uh, some dude was asking. He sent me some deals. Uh, so he remembers the first time that he saw the four hundred five. I'm not sure I can find it somewhere. I don't know. The, the chats are going freaking crazy in this plane. <laughs> Uh, oh, the deal over there. Yeah, I see him moving over there. Uh, there it is. So uh, I remember the first time I saw a 405 crew. It was on the show, Phoenix. I uh, missed that show. I wonder if Chief will ever do the No Prep Kings again. You did No Prep Kings? I did. I did uh, I did six or seven of them, yeah. I did. Uh, this was two or three years ago. Two years yeah. ago. Yeah. Season what? Season three. And they're in season, season three? Season. Yeah. God dang, how many seasons they get? I think they're starting season five, right? Season five is, is coming up like this weekend or next weekend or something in uh, Florida, Palm Beach or something. Oh, okay. Man. There's a train uh, on its way to my shop, apparently. I, I hear it. I hear it. At least, well, at last last week I was uh, doing a recap and I think I thought some dude was chopping a tree down right next to me, but it was the dude over, two, two deals over, and he was weed eating. <laughs> <laughs> he was giving that weed eater hell. Uh, but yeah, pinks. And when we did pinks, that was, you know, phew, that was an eternity ago, it feels like, you know, that was yeah. so long ago, you know. And that deal was like, it's weird how we ended up on TV twice. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of weird, you know. Like, there's certain things in my life that I look at and I'm like, how the fuck did that, how did that, you know, how did this happen? Because like, we were, just street racing here and Asian was talking about doing that, putting a, sending a tape in or whatever to pinks. And we were like, and he was, you know, he's telling us, he's like, I, I want to do it as a team. Cause you know, that's how we roll or whatever. And so I was just like, okay, like as long as, you know, as long as we, it's real, we can do our thing or whatever. Cool. And then, you know, but about halfway through, you know, we, we were having meetings every night, you know, and figuring it out. And the team started getting smaller, you know, because there's some guys wanted to do it their way and some guys, you know, so 
And then, uh, but Asian did a really good job managing that team and managing that, that how we did all that because he took care of the logistics and he took care of, you know, we're taking it to this machine shop. And of course we all have our own machine shop guys or whatever. And he was like, no, I'm not dealing with y'all shit. And he's like, cause I know it'll happen. It'll take too long or something. And then it, it's going to get put on me. So he did, he did, t- he took care of all the logistics. We all pitched in parts and money to build the car. And then, uh, then when we got there, he just let us do our thing. He was like, you make sure we don't lose the car. And Dave, you make sure that you make the races close. You know, that's kind of all he cared about. So yeah. Y'all won, uh, uh, what was it the woolly mammoth or something like that? Or yeah. First one we went, we won a little uh, front wheel drive civic deal. And then the second one, when we went back, we won a, it was like a 73 Vega wagon. It had like three inches of hair all over it. And yeah, it was called the woolly mammoth. Yeah. I remember that. Did you, did y'all actually, I'm sure the show there were, did y'all actually win the car? Oh no. Yes. A hundred percent. Like, uh, I didn't know if it was made I'm for TV, sure. like, you know, shit no. is nowadays. No, know. I'm not. There was some of it that I think they wanted to be more television, but they didn't tell us. So there was some of it that we fucked up, you know, but yeah, no, we took them fucking cars on. Like we kept them off. And, but right after we got home after the first one, you know, cause we couldn't, we're just too stupid. We can't have nothing nice. So when we fucked that deal up, the producer of the show called us and was like, Hey, America is going to hate y'all because of what you did to that kid. Cause you hustled the fuck out of that kid out of that car, you know, cause we just figured everybody was going to bring a car that was faster than what it's supposed to be. So, and then they basically told us we could get back on the show and we could redeem ourselves and be the underdogs in another race. If we gave that kid his car back. Oh, did he, did he cough? <laughs> my ears are so big. There's nothing that'll fit right in my ear. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get you some of these deals right here, right here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, see. Huh? What? <laughs> but uh, yeah. So we we took the car, or we told them, you know, we can't. There's like six, eight people on the team. We can't get everybody out there and shit for free. So we need something. So the show gave us like fifteen hundred or two grand or whatever for that Civic, and we took it back. And then, uh, pumpkin. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he was there. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. So. Uh, we took the car we hauled the little honda back out there and then we uh we were supposed to race kenneth herring in that minivan or whatever and then something happened and he didn't show up supposedly and it was just kind of it was just kind of uh, ironic and and uh, surprising and and awfully convenient that there was a full fucking team of people and a, a big tire pro mod looking car sitting there and a semi and a pro driver and shit and I was like, oh, this is where they get us back for fucking that kid out of his Honda. I get it. Okay. But, you know, we're not stupid either. We knew that they were going to try and fucking get us back. So we came with our get backs and, you know, ready to go. So we sold the kid's car back and then they uh, made us race that fucking Vega wagon deal. And, man, we got, you know, we made it seem like we got lucky, you know what I mean? But like, dude, we took those fucking, we took that Vega wagon to the Thunder Valley here in Oklahoma. We took it to the track. It was a fucking slow turd. Like, I don't know heads up if, if it would have outrun us. <laughs> and uh, we actually crashed it. If we fucking hit the wall with it. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the dude who, uh, the dude who was running the show, the flagger guy or whatever, he promised the dude with the Vega wagon that he wouldn't lose it. Because the dude worked for the show, had like a goatee, and he was like, he told him, "There's no possible way you're gonna lose the car. Don't worry about it." Oh, <laughs> yeah. And then he lost it. So then that dude had to buy it back. So like they came and got it in person and gave us, you know, we charged them like ten grand or fifteen grand or something. We all split the money, and they got it. We, we didn't tell them it's crashed. <laughs> but don't look under the hair. Don't look yeah. under there. <laughs> we didn't even fucking tell them. We bought it that motherfucker up. And we bought it up. We almost hit the Mustang. We were racing both of them at the same time down the track. And fucking, yeah. Fuck, we're so stupid, dude. There's no telling how we're, any of us are still, like, actually breathing and not in a wheelchair. But. But, boy, did y'all have some fun, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we yeah we had some fun. That's no shit. And then you, after uh, that deal, they told us we could never be on anything that had to do with pinks again. Like, never. They're like, they said the only way they actually, actually, they said the only possible way that you could ever be on the show or part of this franchise at all is if, uh, 
is if you somehow race the dude from Chicago. And because they told that guy he pretty much wasn't allowed on the show ever again either. So, and that's, believe it or not, I don't know what happened because back then, so if you watch the show, I know you don't watch the show, but people that do watch the show, we just went to Chicago on the show like a month or two ago on TV. And the dude who was flagging the races in in Chicago, Juicin, used to be, dude, but you remember Juicin. He was smart and he was loudmouth and he was quick and he was witted and like, I don't know what happened. When we went to Chicago this last time, it, it was like, dude, it was like he had been boxing for 20 years or something. It was like somebody had, you know, he was, dude, he was fucking rattled up there. He, and he wasn't quick on his feet or nothing. So I don't know what happened. But, yeah, they told us if we went back up there, if we raced that Chicago dude, if we raced him, we could go back on the show. That'd be the only way. And then we tried to set it up with him. But, dude, there was no there was no getting anywhere with, with him. We argued yeah. with him. He argued with us because we both knew we were going to get fucked. And we were also trying to do the fucking. So you know, <laughs> there was no way that it was going to ever go down. It's which one's going to be the big spoon and which one's going to be the little yeah, spoon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's, dude, there's sometimes when I felt so bad for Asian because I was like, dude, he's just really trying to get this out there and, and you know, do something bigger than what we're doing, you know, because all we cared about was our little website and our little street, and our little area code. And Asian was actually trying to do something bigger, you know, and cool. And here we were fucking it up just because we didn't want to get out run. <laughs> Yeah, so, he, so we were never allowed back on the show. I think eventually they told Farm Truck and Asian that they could come back on the show, but we couldn't. <laughs> and, you know, we were cool with that. We deserved yeah. it. Oh, well. Live and learn. Live and learn. Fuck yeah. Them. I don't know that we learned, though, because I'm still doing the same shit, still pissing people off everywhere I go, fucking shit up for everybody. Man, I, I'm telling you, after I was reading some of the comments, and I was like, God dang, dude. What, what did this do? What What? What did Justin do to you, man? I mean, oh, what yeah. what did he really do to you to make you really that angry? I'm not sure yet. I haven't figured and, that out. I, I, mean, at, I mean, it's like they're fucking, it's like you, you ran over their dog or something. What is it? <clears throat> like somebody said, comment. I don't even what? What are you looking at? What are you showing me? What were you looking at? Uh, where did, oh, oh where comment. Did yeah. yeah, there's a lot of, but you know, it's hard to, it's hard to, uh, I've been doing this so long and I've pissed, you know, there's people that say bad things about me all the time. People make shit up about me every fucking day of the week. But like when you do this to a certain point, it gets to the point where it's like, okay, you have to weigh it literally. What the hell is that? That's a weird noise. Oh, that's probably my air conditioner over here. Oh, okay. You have to weigh you have to look at the comments and weigh them. And so it's like, you know, if there's, if it's overly negative, then you know you fucked up. You know what I mean? You know you got some explaining to do. Or if it's, you know, there's some negative shit and they're loud and they're screaming it, but like for the most part it's positive, then you just have to fucking realize that there's no no need to acknowledge it because there's really nothing to acknowledge at that point. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you, if I was to, go around responding to everybody that spread a bunch of bullshit lies about me every day, dude. That's well, you, all I do. That's yeah, all I do. 24 seven. I mean, and you know, what sucks is doing that. I would be as, as bullshit as all that stuff is that all them guys say, like if I went and fucking responded to it or tried to argue about it or proved it wrong, because the Lord knows I can, if I did that, all I would do is expose all the positive people to the negative shit. You know what I mean? And then it's like, you're just breathing more negative shit, you know? So I've just learned to, you know, like on our last, that video that I did, uh, the future of chief on Strialas or whatever, like, you know, there were some negative comments, but if you look at it, there was, there, there's 9,500 comments in a week on one video, you know? So like, you know, there's two or 300 loud, mean, negative, shitty comments, people just screaming negative shit at me. But then there's like, that, that means there's 9,300 good positive comments or not negative comments anyway, you know? So like, you just have to look at that. And the day that there's 9,300 negative ones and 200 fucking good ones, then, you know, then I start responding to that shit. Yeah. What'd you do to, what'd you do to James? 
man. I get all get him. all he, up in his feels, man. I didn't do nothing to him, man. Me and him were cool. I don't know why. I don't know why he did. I don't know what's going on. Honestly, I have no idea. Like, I've talked to him a few times in the last couple of years, and he's been fun. We've been cool. So I, I still to the to me, honestly, and this is about all I really will say on it because there's more involved in that than than what's really going on. So all I can really say is that I'm just assuming because I haven't actually talked to him personally. I have to assume that me and him or that he is still where he was at the last conversation I had with him. You know what I mean? That's just the way I have to do it because like, you know, there's so much thing, there's so much shit with the internet. There's so much shit with YouTube and so much shit that people have to do for certain reasons or certain whatever. Like, so, you know, last time I talked to him, we were fucking kosher and he said, you know, hell, he was in my kid's fucking happy birthday video. Like for real. Oh, like you can boy. go on my YouTube and look like he was nice as fuck. And, and, you know, and I asked him personally to be in my kid's happy birthday video and he did it. You know what I mean? So like, you know, like we've talked a few times and everything's cool. So I'm just assuming that that's still where we're at until something happens personally or in person, or, or if he calls me or texts me or something, then, you know, then, then, they, then he ups the tone and then we, we go to a different place, I guess. But, you know, so I just, just assume that, the internet is the internet and if people are talking shit on the internet you know it could be for creative reason could be for the show could be for their own business shit i don't fucking know i just have to move on with it though you know yeah i watched a little bit of his of his deal and uh, i guess his rant or whatever and and i just turned it off i was like man i ain't i, ain't, I got better shit to do yeah I got, I mean, we can go, we're going street racing tonight. We're going to go do real there shit. You go. Yeah, see, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at too. Because it's like, man, if I, you know, man, if I if I literally if I went through and responded to every negative fucking hater ass comment out there or whatever, then I might as well. I'm just breeding more negative shit, you know. So what what I try and do is like, instead of if you look if like comments are scrolling on my shit, because I'll spend four or five hours at a time reading and, and typing comments to fans, which is fucking funny because you know. I do that every night, you know what I mean? So like, and I'm, and everybody knows that I'm the last motherfucker to leave a racetrack. If we're out there signing or whatever, I'm the last one. I'll stand out there in the rain and sign all night and make sure every last person got their shit. You know what I mean? And, and I will, you know, I will make sure of it. And so for someone to say that I'm shitty to fans or whatever, just blows my mind, especially when that the same people are, you know, doing the same shit or whatever. So it's like, I just have to look at it like, you know, if there's a negative comment on my feed, why would I pass up 10 positive comments to, to reply to something negative? And then you're asking for more negative energy, you know, when I could reply to a positive person and say positive things with people and have a positive conversation, you know, and then you can fucking then you can walk around and, and, and you feel good all day instead of, you know, if you just sit there and fester in your negativity and other people's negativity and you just argue and you just fucking you know, all day and all night and you start getting fucking blood pressure dude you're not gonna make it very long like that you know what i mean so i'd much rather just have like cool conversations with cool people yeah i was like i was like i made it i made it probably about four or five minutes of it and then i was like man i'm starting to get a headache <laughs> yeah Oh, yeah. but, no, but you know, I've, it is what it is. I mean, I mean, everybody's entitled, especially nowadays, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. And of course, and that's social media about. gives us a, a platform because, you know, their voice is heard. What I really like is somebody directly tags me. And I don't even give them the opportunity. I don't even give them the audacity. I don't even respond to them. Yeah. 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 Well, see, you know, if you, you know, anytime something like that happens, like, you know, if you acknowledge someone's hatred and negativity, then you're basically acknowledging that there's something to acknowledge. You know what I mean? The moment that them people Facts. say something, the moment them people say something real, I'll respond. And if you look at my shit, I do respond to negative comments every once in a while. If they're real, if somebody says something real and I feel like, oh shit, I need to fucking, you know, I need to let this person know that's not the way, that's not the way it is. or That's not the way I am. Like I will respond to them and I'll talk to them and we'll have a genuine conversation. I'm not going to yell and scream at somebody because that's not my thing, but like we'll have a conversation about it and we'll talk about it. And if, you know, we may not share the same opinion at the end of the day, but like at least, at least we can talk about it or whatever. But like, you know, somebody's just saying that outlandish, crazy, reckless shit that that's full, you know, that's like 
absolute lies or whatever, like shit that's easily disprovable or easily provable the other way, then it's like, man, if you know, I can't fucking, I can't slow down to, to, to you know, to fight with that guy. You know what I mean? I got to keep, I got to keep going. So you can't look back to look forward. Yeah. And the other thing is like, I don't, it's not fair to the guys on the show. It's not fair to the show itself. It's not fair to the fans of the show. It's not fair to any of them. If I say, you know, if I say that this is a positive thing and I'm moving to do something else or I'm going to go street racing or I'm going to do my thing and, you know, and don't fucking feel bad or whatever and don't quit watching the show just because of me. Like if I say that shit, but then if I don't do that shit, then I'm not really, I'm not doing it. I'm not really about that shit. You know what I mean? So like, if I say that shit, I'm going to be about it. So the next video I post, ain't going to have nothing to do with that fucking show. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be, I'm going to do what I say I do. You know, there's not, no contradiction there with me. So if I turn around and yell and argue and scream at somebody, then, you know, it'll, you know, something, anything negative comes out of my mouth about the fucking show or whatever, arguing to somebody else on, on the internet, it's not fair to any of the, you know, like just because, just because I'm not there with them doesn't mean that, it's okay for me to fucking shovel dirt in their face. You know what I mean? It's fucked up. So, uh, what's, since there's not, not much big tire racing, what's the plans for the, uh, crow? Well, <laughs> I put smalls on it. I put smalls on it. I don't want to, man. I really don't want to. I really don't. But, uh, we'll see, you know, like, I'd rather not. There's a couple things coming up that, you know, Matt from SSR says, you know, says we got something big going and, you know, in a couple of months or in a month or whatever. So I really want to do that one. You know, I heard it's going to be pretty, you know, pretty big, a lot of big tire cars or whatever. So I want to do that one. And then I'd really, we've been talking about just like showing up and supporting some of the big tire events that, you know, are around that, uh, not something where we would like, you know, do an appearance or nothing or you know sell a bunch of merch or something like set up a big pit or whatever like not nothing like that just like show up you know because this is something i talked about with toby you know a couple of years ago is like dude when you know when i'm ready because we're get, we're gearing up when i'm ready to to stop and come do that shit like i just want to show up and hit weird races that nobody would even know that i was going to be at and then that way you know, the next time that that race goes down, people wonder, you know, hey, is Chief going to be there? Is all these big tire cars going to be there? We need to go because you never know, you know, and just just to try and help out the big tire racing as much as I can on the street. But, you know, but at the same time, if if it's helpless, then, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm going to have to slap some fucking small tires on it and go get my ass handed to me by Ryan Mitchell and Peter Baum and Jackie and fucking Boosted and who? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. And the dude in that fucking, what's that car? That little RX-7, what do they call it? Oh. Uh, junkyard, is it Junkyard Dog or something? Oh, damn. Damn. I haven't, I haven't what's his name? He, the one out in Florida? He, he's from down south or whatever. The, it's got the big stop sign looking way yeah, in the back of uh, it. Chicken Hawk. Chicken off, yeah, that one, yeah, definitely yeah, that, fucking with that, that dude. One. He's all about street and back of the track stuff. He said, "I, yeah. I he goes, I'll, I'll break shit if I'm at the front of the track." Yeah, every yeah. time he wins one of them big races, Jackie's, you know, she rubs it in my face for two days walking around the house. She's like, "Do you see that nitrous car, huh? Nitrous car, one, one the whole deal, one dig or die, huh? I thought, thought nitrous car couldn't do that. I thought that, you know, they couldn't have, they didn't have the mile an hour on a shitty surface to be competitive." And I'm like. Fucked. Yeah. Yeah, Robert. That's his name. Robert. Yeah, that yeah. dude, Robert, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, that dude, uh and he he's fucking he's killing him down there, you know. He's yeah, one he like said, man, he told me that uh the last when I talked to him last time I was over there, he his his suspension was off a quarter of an inch or something like that. Uh, sure. and they got it trued up and he goes, man, it, it goes, I got the motor, I got everything aligned right. And he goes, and that's when he won. I think he won back to back weekends or whatever. Yeah. He won back to back. And then he, but he won like, didn't he win both of the, uh, Darlington races? I think he won like dig or die and, uh, yeah, dig or die, other, Darlington and, or whatever. And, and the other one, uh, that Corey puts on. Yeah. 
That's fucking nuts, dude. Yeah. I don't even know what motor's in that thing. I'm hoping it's a small block, but it may not be. Yeah, I, I think it's a small block Chevy. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Conventional, conventional. Small block. Ooh, yeah. Conventional yeah. hit small block Chevrolet putting in work. Yeah. His tune-up looks fucking huge. Like my he, little brother likes his women. He said that, uh, I think it, I can't remember. He says he don't run like a, uh, progressor or not i think it's just a shot or a shot i don't know if it's a two two kits or just one i don't know man those flames are orange and dirty though like looking at that thing there's probably another 400 horsepower in it just cleaning the tune-up up man like and dude it's like dudes are all over it and they're giving it everything they got and he's fucking pedaling it and fucking doing power wheelies down the street next to him i was like god damn i'd be madder than a motherfucker if i had my shit to the floor and this dude's over here Bruh! and just orange ugly smoky flames coming out of it yeah so i'd get out and fucking walk yeah uh probably match those three kids three kids oh well hey matt now never mind you know what i take all that back now i don't know that's, if a, three. that's I don't a different know. ball game when you got three kits on a conventional small block chevrolet and 440 board space deal it's gonna be rich and retarded it's gonna be there's nothing you can do about it <laughs> uh. You clean that tune up up and then you clean the crankshaft right out of it. Yeah. What, <laughs> Jackie What's Brett? That? How are you on there? You're on there? You're commenting yeah. in the, you're in the fucking thing? Where's she at? She's, she's, a, she she's at? in, I just saw her name in the comments. Where's she at? I can put it up. I think they're going so fast, I can't keep up with it. They're all asking. I was wondering who they're all. They're all asking Jackie questions in the chat, and she's answering. Motherfucker, you're taking away my thunder. This is my fucking video. How many kids on Caddy Jack? Get on Limpy's fucking deal. Uh, how many kids on Caddy Jack? Oh shit, where'd it go? <laughs> all of only, them. Oh yeah, all only of one them. kit on Caddy Jack. Actually, right now it ain't got nothing. It ain't got no fucking kits on it at all. You fixing to get a second kit? Yeah, there you go. We use one. Hers has one kit, but it, it's wired, and she's she's gonna use it like two kits, but it's just one. Yeah. Okay. Do you? I'm surprised you're not going to. Uh, you know, you heard about the big tire deal about next weekend, right? In Kentucky. What? What? They're having a big tire race in Kentucky next weekend. I'm surprised that, that you didn't go to that. No one told. No, no one, dude. Literally, no one invites me to shit. Still, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter there's if like, I'm standing in the street. They wanted to fight me. They hate There's me. like 50-something big tire cars. MPK? No. No. That's, uh, I think I got it right here. Uh, they're doing a small tire and a big tire thing. What the uh, fuck? Uh, Where are we at on that field, Jackie? There's supposed to be a big tire race in, in Kentucky. He's talking like this weekend or next weekend. And he said there's like 50 big tire cars. Down on the asphalt. The Hardingburg. They're starting. They're doing flashlight oh, start see. shit. Oh, it's at the racetrack. Yeah, they're do, They're moving up to like, but they're doing like, flashlight start stuff. Hmm. Yeah. That's a track. That's a track. Huh? That's track stuff. But, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there, so I just figured up. Oh, my, you're going to be there. Well, that's I'm different. Gonna, see, my, it's I'll different. Give, if you're I'll, there. Give my, I'll give them a plug. It's fun. different if you're there. Uh, yeah, no, we're, um, I just, I don't mind uh, hitting some track stuff at some point, you know, but honestly, like, you won't I don't know, man. Stuff. I just, I just, I just want to get in the street and just wash, wash the demons out of me, you know what I mean? Just fucking, bay, yes, just, I want to be baptized in the street, you know, like, bay hopefully man. somebody comes out there and puts 45 car links on me and just, plus I mean just puts me out first fucking round you know and and then I can be like okay this is still normal okay we're good this is this is exactly where I'm supposed to be <laughs> so have you won a cash days fuck no hell no that shit ain't coming I gave up on that investment I, thought, I still I thought, invest every time do you, huh? do you consider winning on did you win on the tv show no fuck no oh, you didn't I ain't oh. never won nothing that was called cash days no okay I didn't know if they called no cash I, days it was or... like I won, you know, I won like the big, uh, I've won a bunch of big shootouts and shit on the show and on the street or whatever, but like, no, if they call it cash days, I go to the final or I go out first round every time. Never fails. Shit the bed. Uh, yeah, I just can't make it happen, which honestly though, 
probably the best thing that could have ever happened to me, you know, because like at some point you can be dishonest with yourself and you can be like, man, I've won, the, I've won them all. You know, I've done everything there is to do. There ain't nothing left to do. I can fucking, you know, I can go do something else and not give a fuck because I did it all. But, you know, there's, there's still a few things that I haven't done it. You know, fuck I haven't guy. done. Fuck that guy. Who's do Dooley? Dooley? Somebody's name is Dooley. Yeah, Dooley? About the J.J. Longgrass. I'm, I'm not in. Oh, uh, yeah, I did. No, the very first, the very first JJ arm drop, uh, the very, very first one he put on, on our show in Okima and, uh, and it was a big race. It was like 55 grand to win or something. And I won that one, but I, it wasn't, you know, everybody said that back then too. They were like, Oh, it's, Oh yeah. I have split at a few cash days. Thanks. Chance buyers. Thanks, that was a, buddy. that was a, that was a hey. five one, wasn't it? Thanks, that was that when it was like that's when we were B and R and you split like five ways, isn't it? <laughs> hey, I've, I, I've split a few of them, but yeah, there was one time. There was one time when I split. There was probably seven people in the split. Like the winner circle picture, it was a wide angle. Like, <laughs> hey, and we were all holding like four hundred bucks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> real money, real money. Yeah, it was uh, that was a real four hundred. I think thing. that uh, I know janitor was in it. He split. It was me. I mean, I'm sure, you know, the normal, normal suspects or whatever, but, uh, but yeah, I remember that. All fucking awesome. And I, hell, to be honest with you, I shouldn't even have been in that. I'll admit it. Like, that was the night that, uh, there was two nights that I shouldn't have been in it. One of the nights, um, Buddy McAfee crossed center, like, by like this much um, at hard. like the finish line and I was still on the starting line. Like he beat me that bad. Like it was like I was I hadn't even left yet. And I went on to the next round and I was just like, Ugh, like that one sucks, you know. And then I think Ronnie or somebody uh put antifreeze down coming back and that's how I split. And I was like, fuck, I didn't even win one fucking race, man. And then uh the next time that I split, I think uh I don't know, it may have been whenever it boosted uh, me and Boosted were going down through there, and there was car coming in my lane or whatever. And it was a big to do or whatever, but they uh, they tried to let me back in that deal, and I was like, "I this is no like we're we're at the point now where you know if I make a, another lick in that car, I don't even know if it'll be worth it. You know what I mean? Because then I will crash or something stupid. So, yeah. but yeah, Boosted was nice to me that night. He's never nice to me the next day on the internet, but in person he's always nice yeah he's he's good at he's real witty let me just say that he's real oh, witty he's with his smart with his comments and yeah he's good with uh comebacks yeah he's real good and with he, comebacks and he's good because he'll hold them too he'll 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 take he'll pick something up that you said and he'll hold it and then right at the perfect moment when you're bitching about something you probably shouldn't be bitching about He'll let that motherfucker out there, and the dude, ugh, I hate it when he does that to me. He quit doing it for a long time too. Then he just started again this year. It's like he only does it when he's active in the street. When he's active in the street, he can be that dude. But when he's not active in the street, he's like, ah, I'm gonna be nice. He said we were at the we were at the gut last weekend, and uh, he said, Oh something yeah, to, I heard. About he that. said he said something to me, and I was like, What the fuck's he talking about? <laughs> I was just like, all right. Shit. Oh, he said something to you? Yeah, he was talking to yeah. me and he said something, and I was like, I don't know where the fuck this is going, but I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. But hey, man, maybe it's something I'm I said. Maybe it's yeah, something I whenever, said. But... <laughs> whenever Booster gets on me like that or says something mean to me, I always know, like, okay, I must have done something to him because he's, you know, he remembers it and he's gonna wait and let me have it. And you know, he said some pretty mean things to me before. <laughs> oh, he gave me Jeez, some money. Is though. it true? Dom didn't want any part of Seattle Walls because he thought it was a setup. Um, Dom, you know, and like the original, like when we were very first starting, uh, Dom was worried, you know, but there was a few of them, but Dom was, he was on that. Yeah, he was on that fence with uh, Doc and I think a couple other guys. It was like, we have businesses and CBLs and we have, you know, we have things that we can't lose. And if we do, then we lose our livelihood or whatever. So, and I understood, you know, but 
but I was like, hey, you know, I get it, but we're going to go out there anyway. So, so there wasn't, a, you know, the first night that we filmed with the TV show people, like not everybody was there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, somebody asked, would you take, I think it's a dumb question. That's not, a, it, it, not any question is a dumb question, but I'm sure it's a yes for him. Or would you take the crow mod to, to Sweden? The if Chrome you could, if you could and run out there in Stockholm. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, fuck yeah. That's I'd rather one, take. I, I'd, that's that's the number one bucket list for me, right? Yeah, there. I'd rather know. take my. Uh, I'd rather take my steel car though, you know, just because I kind of feel like a pussy if I show up over there with a carbon car and they, you know, those guys. It's hard for them to just get any cars over there like that. So no, I'd rather take my DTO. But yeah, fuck yeah, that's like, you know, that was the first thing we told them whenever they were talking about doing the show. It was like, you know. All we want is at some point we want you to take us to Sweden so we can race those guys. Yeah. Some what are they saying over here? I don't understand it. My favorite race. Good track when you finally beat uh, that was a good one, man. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good race. Bristol, the first Bristol race was a good race. Yeah. I did uh I got real lucky on a few of those deals. But yeah, that was a good race for sure. Oh. So um I seen that uh Billy went and came out and hung out with y'all and stuff. And uh, was that yeah, a good time did. or was it? Y'all yeah, taking, cool. taking me to strip clubs? No, no, we don't, you know, we don't fuck around like that. Like, no, nah, it wasn't like that at all. Now, uh, now he might have went to some while he was out here. I don't know. I do know that you Hell know, yeah. I gave him Jackie Stalak to drive for the week or whatever. And when we got it back, there was glitter and all kinds of shit in there. So who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Lipstick. Oh, yeah, there was there was Literally. lipstick and you know there's all kinds of stuff, uh, but yeah, there was one night we were coming back from the racetrack and uh, the guy that does the, a lot of the fabricating and stuff here at the shop and he works here, Twan, he was uh he was riding with Billy and he said so when they left the track he said they were on their way up home or whatever and of course we had been there all fucking day and he said Billy was like we're going to Hooters or whatever what's that other place Twin Peaks he said one I don't remember which one but he's like we're going to Hooters or Twin Peaks or whatever and Twan was like okay <laughs> he was like like he didn't even like ask me if i wanted to go he just said we're going there he's like so pretty much i had to go there and i was like oh i'm sorry you had to go to twin peaks or i'm sorry you had to go to hooters to on you know but yeah billy was uh we were trying to fucking we were trying to help him out you know we were trying to get him out of that funk yeah. i think it works he was a uh, he's fun he's fun to be around he's a good kid yeah and he, he's all about he's all about racing mm, oh yeah for sure and he's uh, he's passionate and he's 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 focused on on what he's doing and, and I like it. You know what I mean? Like you get distracted every once in a while. That's okay. It's it's healthy. That there are healthy distractions out there, you know. But like I'm telling you, man, that kid he he thinks about racing non fucking stop, racing and pussy, and that's all he thinks about. Hell yeah! What else is there? <laughs> Fighting with his dad. Oh. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go man. Uh. What's the biggest thing you miss about when you started out as a real race master? And I, I hate that pain, to be honest with you, but yeah, me too. Uh, street outlaws versus when things are now. What's the one thing I miss? Yeah. Uh, what's the one thing you miss about when you started out? Oh, what's the biggest thing? And versus now. Um, probably the spots I'm, i miss the spots the most you know like that's the hardest one i think it's still hard for me to deal with that one like you know because when we first started we were racing at legit street race spots around here we were racing in el reno and shit you know like we were we were you know we were getting down at at spots that had a little history you know what i mean that was cool and then and we went to different spots you know we'd race one one week here and the next week we'd go to you know another spot or here or whatever like we had three or four different spots that were 15 minutes from the house. That was cool. You know, that, that I missed that a lot. I missed that a bunch. Yeah. Somebody said, um, what happened, what like happened I, to monkey? I'm what not going to talk. Huh? Somebody asked what happened to monkey monkey. Um, whenever after, uh, after the split with Sean, um, when I went and did, I was doing the MPK thing or whatever. And, uh, it just, we just, there was just a few bad weekends there where, you know, we just weren't getting along or whatever. And so it just got to the point where, uh, I think we had, 
we had lost too many races together. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's all like, I don't know how to explain it to people that, that haven't been through it, but like, you know, there's some people that you, you're around and you think like, I'm going to be around this motherfucker forever. There's no doubt about it. Like me and this dude are going to be together. Like we're going to be racing or, or working together for the rest of our lives, you know? And then the, the good days outweigh the bad days. Even if you have a few bad days, the good days are good enough that it outweighs the bad. And then, you know, and then there's just, I don't know, there's just something about what we were doing at the time and the stress and being out of town all the time. And he couldn't, you know, he had a, uh, a new family, basically. He had a, you know, a young, a young marriage. And I don't even know if he was married at that time. He was like engaged. And so, you know, they had just bought a house and shit together. Like it's tough for someone in that situation to go out of town and like, you tell him we're leaving tomorrow because we didn't find out until today where we're going or when we're going to be there. We're leaving tomorrow and we don't know when we're going to be home. We don't even know where we're going to stay when we get there. You know, it's hard to tell somebody like that because how does he tell his, his girlfriend who's at home or his, you know, his fiance or wife or whatever, who's at home watching his kid. And how do you tell that, that person, Hey, I'm leaving tomorrow. Don't know when I'm coming home. I don't know where I'm staying when I get there. Like, you know, and I don't know where I'm going after that because we may go to the next city or whatever. So that kind of that's stressful. And so, you know, it just it weighs on it weighs on you, especially when, you know, then it starts building resentment, you know, where he feel you know, he'll feel like maybe I didn't tell him when I first found out, like maybe I found out two days before the day I told him and he, you know, he he'd feel like I was holding it out on him or something like that. And so he'd feel resentment there. Or maybe I feel resentment because he couldn't make a race, you know, he couldn't make this race or he couldn't make that race. And this race was more important. And, you know, it just, man, it's weird when you're, when you're with somebody that much and the things you're doing are that important to you, you know, like it just makes it tough. And, you know, he's, he's uh, one of the most amazing mechanics and human being, one of the most amazing human beings I've ever met. And, uh, but there's just some points where it's like you have a few too many bad days over the good days and there's not enough good days in there, you know? And so he just keeps getting stretched out until it's like, you know, man, like, why the fuck are we doing this? You know, why are we fighting? Why do we hate each other? Why do we not want to be around each other? Why is it that I want to come to the shop when you're leaving or when you're not there? And, you know, like it just, uh, it gets to the point where it's like both of us would probably be happier in a different place right now, you know? But, yeah. but dude, I mean, I've seen him since then. Like, you know, I don't know, man. Every time I get around Monkey, you know, I feel home. You know what I mean? He's, he's, uh, he's, he was there for every big moment, every big win. You know, my whole coming up, Monkey was there for it. Monkey was standing there when I won and he was standing there when I lost either fucking way. So, yeah. He, and he you was, know, do people, do people do grow apart, believe it or not? Yeah. I well, know, I know, and I know. it's not even like, cause I hate when people, cause people say that it makes it seem like, you grew apart on purpose or you turned, you steered it both, steered it the wrong way. But no, it's like, dude, you know, you got to remember like monkey monkey is young and he had a, a, his whole life ahead of him and he had a new girlfriend, you know, or not new, but like a young girlfriend, you know, and, and he had a new house and like he had a life, you know what I mean? And I was literally, my life was this television show. And so it just, we weren't, it wasn't the same anymore between me and him because before that it, my life was, heating and air conditioning and racing on the weekends you know what i mean and so he did the heat and air part with me during the day and he you know he ran a service truck for me and you know we were learning heat and air together and shit and then all of a sudden we're racing together so it was just one of those things we ne none, neither one of us ever really signed up for where we ended up you know what i mean so but but you had fun on the way to it ah oh, dude me and monkey had some of the fucking man me and monkey had, there's some there's stories that me and Monkey have been through shit together that's just like, how in the fuck did that happen? Like, why did that happen? Like, you know, what alien fucking spacecraft, you know, made that happen? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's some pretty, pretty fun stuff, pretty crazy stuff between me and him. And, you know, there's still stuff every day. He still influences me every day. Like, there's stuff that I do in the shop that I laugh because, you know, something that he reminds me of or Jackie will say something that he used to say or whatever and we'll laugh and shit. Like, you know, he's still, and I'm still teaching people shit he taught me about cars so like you know ain't no hate there that's for sure uh somebody asked when you're gonna take 
Dirk Diggler out on the street. Hey, well, it? I mean, I saw on Instagram today that I guess we're going to be doing that right now uh, because we dropped off Jackie's Motors Machine Shop. And on Instagram today, I saw Jackie's Instagram said, you know, time to get this, time to get the old red Corvette out, get this bad boy ready. And I was like, oh, shit, okay. You're getting that deal ready then, huh? So, yeah, uh, it's not, we didn't get to build it the way that we were talking about doing it because we've been messing with her car and stuff and uh but but it's uh it's gonna be very relatable i promise you that it's just old punk ass small block we're gonna put a plate on it and we're gonna fucking send it swing at it see what see what it'll do on some 28s or whatever 29s yeah 20 i mean it's got hey one burger got 29 fives on it right now that's it's small tire. that's a small tire it's small tire yeah that's what i said <laughs> Uh, something about friction between you and Axman after the whole race up and down America's list. What's America's list? It's a TV show, Wimpy. Oh, okay. It's like American Idol, but everybody. it's like American. Okay. Yeah. Y'all, y'all seen <laughs> no. with mask on or something? <laughs> no. no. Is that it? No. It's like the 405 show, but a bigger list, you know? Instead oh, of, and okay. 25. So, uh, but was there any friction between me and him? And to be honest with you, after that moment or whatever, we hung out in my trailer for like an hour that night. I mean, it was daylight. We, Me and him and Jackie were in the trailer till, I mean, how, what time was it? It was daylight at, when Axeman, after me and that shit happened with Axeman. Like, he hung out in my trailer till, I'm telling you, it was fucking sun up. Everybody left but us. We were the only ones left there, you know? And we were just, he told us his, his position on, you know, what was going on. And he was like, you know, he just felt like, the being that he was kind of the new guy there and was making waves and 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 winning races he felt like that he was uh a target or being picked on maybe or being not picked on but like not given the chances that everybody else was to learn the shit or whatever figure the shit out and you know and of course we you know i felt that um i felt that he just didn't want to race me or whatever you know and so we we but we hashed it out in the trailer and then but he told me, he was like, once you walked off, he's like, once you walked off and walked right over to Kai and asked him to call you out, he's like, I felt, you know, he's like, then I felt like you really did just want to race and you weren't trying to just, you know, he just felt like I was trying to get him knocked out of the number one spot. And I was like, I don't give a fuck, you know, who's in the number one spot. It's me, the only one I care about being in the number one spot. So, you know, we were, we were cool after that. And I've seen him a few times after that. And, you know, I ain't got... I got no ill will toward Axe, man. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, so maybe about, and you know, we're, but like people, people were like getting mad at me and they're like, oh, you should have done something. You should have done something. This, that's the part where the, that's where, that's where, that's where it gets twisted. That's where it gets fucked up is like, you know, yes, I'm the race master. I'm supposed to uphold the rules, right? You know, like that's what I'm supposed to do. But like, what do you do when there's 25 people there? that have their own reason for being there and it has nothing to do with me like not one racer out there was contacted by me or told when to, when we're doing it or where to go or where to be or what time to show up or none of that like everybody there got there on their on their own they have their own contracts their own reasons for being there their own negotiations so like everybody there had their own way that they fought to be on that show so like if I, I can't walk over to somebody there and be like, if you don't want to fucking race, you can go home. Cause then I'm, then I'm trying, then I'm pushing out a employee of discovery on their own set. You know what I mean? Like I get sued, you know what I mean? I can't, fuck, I can't fucking do that. Like, you know, so if, if I was the one who invited him to the race or invited him to the list, or if I was the one who said, you know, if I was the one who picked all those racers and said, okay, everybody, I want you to be on America's list. I want you to be on, you're badass, you're fast, you're cool, be on America's list. If I'd have done that, then when, yeah, fuck yeah, I could have gone over and been like, if you don't like the fucking rules, you can get the fuck out. But like, you know, dude's got fucking legal fucking shit on how he got there. And who knows how hard he had to fight to get there. Who knows how hard he had to fight to get that contract or get the money or whatever. Like, I don't know, he could have. You know, he could have gave up everything to get that contract with Discovery. I don't fucking know. So, like, you know, but at the same, but like, it doesn't matter. I can't go over and tell him go home, you know, because like he has yeah. a contract. So, like, all I'll do is look like a fucking idiot because I'll say go home and he'll say, 
You know, and then they'll say, you don't have to play. Like, I'm a free agent. I'm a free agent. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So. Did you. Uh, all did I do you... in those situations, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And I look at the film crew and I'm like, what do you want me to fucking do? Like, if he doesn't want to fucking race, I can't make him race. Do you, did you, do you get a list of racers or do, do they do that? I don't get nothing. I find out, I find out who's racing in the driver's Okay. Room, well, in the driver's name, like when they find out. So, so in realistically, in reality, you're not the race master. You're just, fuck no, not you're even close. Flagger. You're just a flagger no. or just I'm not a racer. Even a fl- for the most part, I'm not even a flagger because they tell me, I, you know, like I'm not flagging it my way. You know I mean? They're, they're telling me how to flag it. They're telling me the rules and what I can do and what I can't do. So like, you know, for the most part, I'm just the guy they blame the shit on, you know? Because <laughs> and people in, in reality. Colts or whatever. And as in Colts or Colts, you the full guy. Yeah. A, a race master gets the cars together. He does everything and he's the man. Yeah, no, I've I've been a race master before. Yeah, no, I've done yeah, it. But on believe the TV it or not, show? Limpy, I'm not. I mean, I know, I know it's been a while, Limpy, but I have on been the, a race master. I have held a race on a, on a TV show though. No, I, I no no on the street. <laughs> the last time uh, I in, actually, in the real streets in the real streets. The last time I was an actual street or an actual race master was fucking a real race master. I don't even fucking know. Last time that I ran it. Uh oh, how come I shut off, Jackie? What'd you do? I got nothing. Edge webcam. Hang on. She's I have a I have a producer here. She's fixing it. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, the last time I, I was the race master and made all the decisions or whatever. Uh fuck. Third, fourth season, maybe. And even then, there's still there's always a few racers that that I uh you know, it's a compromise. There's always a few racers that they have to have in there or want to have in there or whatever, you know. I got you. Just sitting there reading the comments. I'm sorry, the battery died in something or another earlier. Jackie's getting it fired back up. So, uh, did, uh, what was that question? So why did you, why did you, uh, is it, is it, is your video really a reason why you quit? Is my video the reason why I quit? Hey, I'm back. Look, hey, hey, yay. Sorry, or is there, I, is there, I heard, I've heard between me and you, the, the three people watching right now, that there was other alternatives why you, you quit. There was alternatives of why I quit? Yeah, because you're not the man, for one. Uh, you're not the shot caller, which if, if you're not, the, if you're not, that's fair. I'm if not you're not, off. if you're not, if you're not getting the cars together, and you're saying who can and who can't race, then guess what? You're not the shot caller. I haven't been the shot caller, I mean, a long time. So that I mean, that, you can, miss, that miss busted right there. You can look that you can look at the races that, that I've held. Look at the races that I've been at and the races that I've held on the show. Look at the people that are on the that I bring to the list and stuff. You can fucking tell when the last time was that I got to pick the racers. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. And so, I know when know y'all I mean? came here that one time they they got somebody I don't know who they got but they got a bunch of track guys, and I was like, "Yeah, well, this ain't this ain't gonna go fucking well." And of course yeah. it didn't. According, to, I think, I think it was a clean sweep or something like that. And I was like, "Well, fuck, nobody actually street races here. They all track races." That's that's the best guys to get for that deal. Oh yeah, I mean you got you got stand-ins, I guess you got fluffers. Yeah. Yeah, I said it fluffers. I said yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, you know, people I like I get what you're saying. I've heard I've heard that. Like I've I've read those comments. People are like, oh, he's not he's not the man or he's not the, the shot caller anymore, so he's he's gonna take his ball and go home or whatever. But like if that's the case, you know, that's five years ago I would have quit. <laughs> you know, like I haven't no one's told no one I don't make any fucking decisions, literally none. So, you were actually flagging? Was you actually flagging races? They said somebody said you were actually flagging races. When? I guess on the TV show. Uh, on, 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 a, 
on a TV show, I guess. On the first season of America's List, I flagged on the first I guess, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I I did, you know, I did something that was uh, simulated. Something like, yeah, yeah, I did something like flagging for sure. I did something like this, and it had to count how many of these I do. What what you know? the fuck is that shit? I don't. I don't know. I seen some promos, and I'm like, what? What yeah. the fuck is that shit? I, I don't uh, know. I don't everybody know does it different, I guess, brother. Is that like your five count? Because yeah. I do. People, I do a five count. If you're not bumped in within five seconds, you're getting fucking the light shined in your face. Yeah. Well, it's different but, now because dude, they don't. Nobody fucking stages their own race car anymore. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and. Uh, this isn't, I'm not trying to talk shit on anybody that races this way or anybody that, you know, came flags, up this way or whatever. Right anybody that flags this way. I'm not talking shit on nobody. All I'm saying is the way that I flag <laughs> is, you know, the same way out, you know, when it's my race or when I'm flagging a real race, you know, hell, I flagged McDougal on fucking pole road not too long ago. And I flagged that the way I've always flagged races for 20 years, you know, and because it was a real legit street race, but like, you know, you you get your your you or your people put you close and then I pull you to the line. Don't pull the line till you're ready. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's that's the way I flag. Well, people don't do that shit no more. They don't want to do that. They don't want to have to figure out which pedal to hit and then how and then like, oh I got to go on the trans break and then when do I go on the trans break? Is it when you're telling him or when you're telling me? Or am I up there yet? Like they don't want to do all that. So they want to sit there on the fucking starting line, not do a fucking thing, and then you give them however many fucking flags they want waves you give them five waves or whatever they want and you turn the fucking light on so that's what they want what am i gonna do no. oh not that one where'd it go it was uh you had a situation where you're able to feel like you've got a big win in negotiations with the show as race master oh The fool's getting yeah. paid. The fool's getting paid, so he's already won. Oh, yeah. I mean, as far as negotiations went, no. I mean, you know, there was the first first four or five seasons, you know, I, I did pretty good negotiations, but uh, they've been getting their get back since then. But, like, uh, no, I mean, you know, but, like, as far as, like, race master shit, you know, yeah, there was a few times when shit just wasn't working. You know, like, when they, you know, they tried to make a bunch of different rules that nobody understood, like, the 15 minutes you know because we have to get so many races per night so like as a race master you know i'm not allowed to do anything or tell anybody what to do or nothing but not make rules or nothing but yet i got to give them 10 or 12 races a night it's hard to do when you got a list of 12 guys and two of them are always fucking broke and two of them don't want to race more than once you know so like i'd end up having to race three or four times a fucking night but like you know, there was a few times where they come up with some crazy, stupid fucking rules or whatever that didn't make any sense and it didn't work and it locked the list up or whatever. And then they, you know, I would get to help them make a better decision or whatever. But, you know, the only, I mean, the, the times Chicago, honestly, the last time that I got a fucking win in negotiations as race master was Chicago. That was fucking, nobody has any fucking idea how hard I worked to get that fucking show, to get Chicago to happen. Like, Juicin is the only one who knows. Well, Ryan knows. I mean, I dealt with Ryan a lot on it. Me and Ryan tried to get that race two years ago before that or a year and a half before that or whatever. And then we tried to get it another time in between there. And then this last time, I mean, it went till the last minute that they weren't going to do it. And they finally did it. So that was that was big for me because that was the last time. And it was the first time in a long time that we got to race on a real street race spot. You know what I mean? Like, cause that, that road is real. They race, they fucking street race there. So to, uh, to me, to me, that was, you know, you don't get no better than that. There is no better negotiation to win. It doesn't matter how much money you get paid per episode or whatever. It doesn't matter how much your raises or your bonuses and all that shit. Like if you're not racing on fucking, you know, split spots like the pad or, you know, J road or whatever, like what's the fucking point. So yeah, getting to go there, dude. Especially with the Studebaker, because Studebaker's gonna be there. That was like, honestly, that was my bucket list, and that was the one thing I wanted to do before, before I ever left the show, before I ever quit, before I, you know, before anything happened. I wanted to race the Studebaker on a street race spot somewhere. Yeah. You know? Did y'all did y'all race? No, I didn't get to race. No. I didn't race. No, because there was uh, there was a bunch of small tire cars there, and 
we tried to come up with a way to make it right, you know. So we tried to come up with a way. I want we wanted it to go down. We wanted that race to happen so bad because we hadn't been out of town in forever. We hadn't raced anybody new. We hadn't raced any real street races. We hadn't raced any real street race spots in ye- literally years. So like, I was ready to do anything to get that race off. So whenever they said that the small tire guys were wanting car links or the hit or whatever, you know, like at first I didn't want to give them shit. I was like, I'm not giving nobody nothing. But then when we got there, I was like. I just want to fucking race on this road, man. I just want to race on this road so fucking bad. And so we ended up with like 23 foot head start and the hit or whatever. And uh, Jamin, the guy with the Studebaker, I totally understand. Like, I totally get where he's coming from because those guys hustle a lot up there. And uh, they're not going to give a fuck about your motor, your Hemi or your belt or whatever. And so... He's got a big badass blower car, screw blower, or whatever. You know, if he puts that thing on the mat and that dude over there, he's giving that dude the hit. If he puts his shit on the mat and that dude fucks around, you know, his shit's fucking junk. Like, yeah. so he was like, I'm not doing that shit. He goes, I'll do anything but the hit. I don't give a fuck what it is. He's like, I'll give you more car links. He's like, I'll give you five car links, but I can't give you the hit because, you know, it'll burn you down. A- well, because he has a belt and a fucking, he's putting it on the rev limiter and that belt is doing like this, you know, so I kind of right. understood where he was coming from. But yeah. but at the same time, like, it could have gone either way, obviously, you know, because there was a lot of races that were given the hit that they pretty much went on the light and they were respectful and everything was cool. And then there was a couple that accidental mishaps or whatever and took a little bit longer for them to go. But like, but that's part of getting the hit. You get to go whenever the fuck you want, you know, so like, can't blame them either, but. So no, so he decided not to race and he went home. Yeah. And that was the fucking that was like lump in my throat, you know, my stomach started hurting and I was like, fuck, this is a total bust. <laughs> but So what's your take on JJ and his wife's crash on oh that's is, horrible. Is, is that Amer- America's I'm, list? It says a it says Al season two. I guess that's America's list. Yeah, America's list is on air right now, yeah. yeah uh, as as a racer. As a racer, I hate to see, you know, as a, as a human, shit, fuck being a racer. As a human, I hate to see anybody in an accident. I don't even want to see somebody stub their fucking toe, you know what I mean? Like, I hate that to shit see hurts. Like, yeah, fuck. Like, no, I don't want to see nobody in an accident. I don't want to see nobody hurt, you know? So, you know, I, to be honest with you, I try not to even watch shit like that. Like, if I know somebody's going to crash, I don't, I try not to even watch it because mortality is something I don't like dealing with because I'm delusional, you know? I like to think that. I'm bulletproof and shit. So like seeing other racers that get hurt or in crashes, like I don't want to see that shit. You know what I mean? When you and Brian wrecked uh way back in the day, uh did did you think it was over for you? No, I mean I didn't obviously right away, you know, because I was stupid. So I thought I was okay. I just thought the car was junk, so I got out and walked off. But then, you know, you wake up, find out later on that you you know, might not walk again and shit. That kind of changes things. And then, like, couldn't breathe. And when you're breathing, there's, like, air coming out from underneath your shirt. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? You know, because I, like, punctured lungs and shit. So things were weird. But, no, I mean, never even crossed my mind that I wouldn't race again or that I wouldn't, you know, that I was done with it. But yeah. it might have if it would have been my error. You know, like, if I was if I was the reason, if I, like, if it was too loose and I just couldn't gather it up or if I... uh didn't get it shut down or something crashed. Like if it was if it was on me, then yeah, I'd probably think differently. But dude, I mean, I was literally on a lick and just got fucking hit, and I didn't even know it was coming. So to me, I was you know clueless to the whole situation. Yeah, and we all know what we sign up for when when we do that shit too. So. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I know he was he was all upset and stuff. I I I seen the post or whatever on Facebook, and you know. It's bound to happen, you know. It's oh, yeah. just like just like racing down the road with telephone poles going all the way down, you know. Shit, shit's yeah. bound to happen. You know? Yeah, he's genuinely a good guy, and he he uh, he really is. Yeah, I think he's I think he's good to the core. You know, I mean, I really do. I think he's a good dude. I think he actually he actually did go a fuck. He actually everything about him is pretty genuine. So, uh, you know, I felt just as bad for him as he did for me. You know what I mean? But, yeah. And he's been super cool ever since then. We still talk. Fucking everything's good. Yeah. So all the places that you've been to minus filming, I know, I know when y'all go to all these places y'all film, but y'all go to, I guess, 
some of the spots I guess y'all go to are in the race, but some of the gangster spots y'all can't go go to. What, yeah, what's yeah. The best, you what's know. the best places that, that you can think of that you would you haven't made a hit, but you'd like to go and make a hit? I still haven't made a hit at 130 times Maine. I stood there. I, you know, I watched it. You know, I mean, I've been there, and just standing there was, you know, huge to me. But, like, you know, I would I, – obviously, that's probably at the top of, you know, I want to make a hit there, which is cool. There's a lot of people that have got to, and it's pretty fucking awesome. And, it, and I think it's – also, I think it's cool that I haven't got to yet because that, you know – it makes it more special for people, you know, for everybody. Like if everybody goes out and makes a hit at 135th in Maine and who gives a fuck anymore, you know, but like, you know, that, that's a pretty special deal. I think for me, if I get to do that, that'd be cool. Um, Sweden obviously is, you know, if I say like bucket list things, you know, the number one is here, you know, Where's my, yeah, number one's here. Like Sweden is on its whole other thing up here. Like it's not even on the Facts. same list. Like you don't even have to ask. Like, what's the number one thing? It's always Sweden, you know. So, but I've been watching Sweden videos for fucking years, years. Mm -hmm. Like back when they muffled their voices on their videos and shit, you know. Uh, but as far as spots go, man, I was just talking about this the other day too. Where's another one of those spots that I still want to hit? Oh, the highway in New York. I'd like to hit that spot, you know, Facts. where Dre did the big wheelie back in the day. huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jackie wants to make a hit at the pads. She's never made a hit at the pads, so she's fucking, she wants to do that pretty bad. That's gangster. Yeah. Um, uh, Baker. I never made a hit at Baker either in California. Did you go there? Have you been to Baker? No, I've been like the race. I actually flag like races at I, I got the fire race at 130 for the man. It was slow. It was like two Mustangs or whatever, like slow new cars, but I did get the fire race. It was pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Dude, I, when I was flagging the race, I felt like I was, I didn't know if I was going to puke or fart or I was so nervous. <laughs> I was like, I was like, man, I had the <laughs> butterfly. It was like the first race I ever flagged before in my life. And I was like, do they, do they wait for the light to go green? And they're all just send them. I'm like, no, I'm going to have to turn around and look. Wait. All right, it's green. We're gonna send them. And I did arm drop, and then they wanted the flashlight. And I was like, yeah, I like to go to. Uh, you ever seen where they race at Philly? Where they race at the? Oh yeah, yeah, that looks yeah. gangster. Philly, that looks Philly's scary. gangster. And then uh, there's another place in Philly where they race the four wheelers too. That looks really gangster. Yeah. And then there used to be a place in Louisville, but it, uh, I don't think it's around anymore. It was like downtown or whatever. And they, uh, I'm gonna have to find out. Yeah, we yeah. Just, he we was. Just, well, he was. We were, we were just there uh, not too long ago, uh, or two weeks ago, I think, and they were out there making a hit. One time. Oh yeah, yeah. That's my the cops that's my were home. like, yeah, the cops were like over by McDonald's with the. It was straight as a crow flies, probably not even half a mile, and Butterface was like purging it through the motor, wham, wham, and I'm like, hell yeah, and he just he sent it and then went and unloaded, and he's like. Yeah, when that third kit kicked in, I hit that manhole and uh, I felt it shimmy a little bit. But I'm like, and it's like a sidewalk. It's like a little two lanes, two lane blacktop road. And I'm like, hell yeah, get down. <laughs> yeah, the uh, there used there was a video. The, one of the first videos I saw of Louisville. It was, it was mostly bikes back then, but like <clears throat> Happy um, was uh, is it 13th Street? Yeah, okay, maybe it's 13th Street. But Happy was there in a Chevelle. It was like a baby blue color Chevelle, maybe a black vinyl or black black stripes or black vinyl top. And it was called Slow Slow Ride or no. Fuck. I can't remember what the car was called back then, but it was a it was uh I just remember it was a back that ass up with the music or whatever in, in the video and it was him and it was slow motion that's the name of the car was slow motion okay. it was no it was uh slow motion for me was the song yeah it was slow motion and uh yeah the car was I'm like the tweak, to respond so he'll, he'll the car was like tweaked up like this and the left front was way up off the ground and it was rolling out there and it was slow motion for me slow motion for me and i was yeah, i played that video a million fucking times probably <laughs> oh no he hadn't responded yet or he's yeah. he's an old timer so yeah, he stood on he stood on the street in 
and scream that shit when he, he came to tapping, tapping with one <laughs> finger. When he came to Oklahoma for cash day that time, he uh, he stood in the street and he didn't say a fucking word. Everything was chill until right before we started racing. And I was I was, I was screaming. I was like, "This is cash days or whatever." And he was like, he waited till it was quiet and he was like. We're from Kentucky, motherfucker. He's like, we don't fuck around. We fuck straight up and down. And I was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. I started saying it. I stole it from him. He was like, I said it first. Like, I don't care. I'm gonna say it everywhere. Yeah. I go. He goes, that's my hashtag. That's been my hashtag for years. That was yep. that was I was my hashtag before hashtags were cool. That's right. He's right too. Yep. And anybody that like, I'll say it on the show sometimes. I say it on on the internet or whatever state where I'm at. People are like, somebody will come and be like, oh, uh, there's a guy that says he said that first. I'm like, he showed a fuck did. I guarantee he did. He said it 10 years before I ever heard it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, because then, then we have the dudes in the uh, DSM cars or whatever, the talents from Kentucky, you know, that was, uh, he probably said that 10 seconds before they throw the crank out of the bottom of those things like they do everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over at Climate Masters. Yeah, hey, but man, they got fucked by Doc though, dude. They they remember they raced Doc and it was like so close. And then Doc was like, We'll just re-race. And I was like, I was like, there's no way those guys are gonna go for that. That those little cars break so much. Like, I wouldn't re-race nobody if I had one of those cars. Because you only gotta make four passes and you're in the money. You know what I mean? And there's a good chance the cops are gonna come. We're gonna go to another spot that thing got no rubber on it, and that little car is gonna fuck everybody up. And Doc fucking talked them into rerunning or whatever. I was like, God, I can't, this is insane. Like why would they do that? You know, but it was, uh, that was back when you had to have a really good lawyer on the street to argue your case, you know, <laughs> the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when, uh, Mark, uh, the janitor rolled down there and he kicked the fucking windshield out and yep. he was, he was ready to go. But then he was like, I didn't realize he had a broke a arm. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was, you know, he still got that car, right? I've heard. Yeah, I've heard. He's, he's, Dude. He, he's still he's still OCD, ADD. He's got everything's got to be perfect on it. So that's cool. I like that. I like that about him. But yeah, that talk about a nervous night for me. You know, putting on a cash days and there's people there from all over the fucking country. Most of my cash days that I'd run up until that point was only two or three states wide. You know, but then that night there was people from all over the country in my city, and first lick, dude, fucking rolls it out in the middle of 44th Street. I was like. Oh my God. I was hoping to get at least first round done here, you know, and cause we just didn't have a lot of spots. So when that happened, I was like, I'm fucked, dude. There's no way we're going to finish this race. There's no way. And then Doc ended up winning the whole fucking thing. Yeah. And we just staying there the whole night, right? Nick? Yep. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah, we fucking raced there. We finished the whole deal right there. Uh, yeah. It was either Doc or Goaty I can't remember. Goaty Bo might've won that one. I thought no, Doc. I think it was Doc. I think it was, I think Doc. It was Doc. Cause, uh, Cause I know he was racing. Uh, I think it was him and uh, uh, Dave in the semifinals, I think, or whatever. Or no, was it Dave and and Doc in the finals? And Dave went kaput right before the. Oh uh, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because Monza was racing Jack uh, Janitor. Yeah, and Monza. Monza was like. Blow the fucking hood off of it or whatever. Yeah, the janitor yeah, drove like around five hundred feet, last, and then, yeah, like the last ten foot. Yeah, and then crazy. yeah, they I think they blew up at like five hundred fifty or five hundred foot or something like that. And but they were pretty neck neck. And then yeah, and that was good. That was good times. That was good times. That, was. that road is extremely short. Man, you ain't lying. It is short as fuck. <laughs> Plus, it's downhill. Yeah, it's downhill and short, and it's like bumpy in the beginning you know what i mean so it kind of just it already kind of sets you moving you know like because like right after two or three squares of concrete out it drops down so like it just kind of sets you moving already so then when you get down through there it's, it's fucking wild it depends on if they had uh an extra trailer in the way or whatever if they moved the yeah. trailer back back then yeah oh yeah we used to fucking we used to have to move them that shit <laughs> sucked man good good times good times good old days oh are you are you getting back to the where you can do the good old days again? Oh yeah, I'm fucking yeah. We're we're literally uh, one running car away from being in the good old days. <laughs> fuck everybody, fuck everything. We're gonna do what we want. It is there any? Are you are you done with all the shows or or are you? Is there a chance you go back or or? 
I'm pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much, pretty much here. I'm doing my thing. Uh, the 405 show, you know, that would be the only way, you know, if the 405 show was something different or whatever, if it was something that I was interested in, that'd be really the only way, you know, just because that's such, you know, that one means so much, but it only means so much if it's the same thing, you know, or if it's what it's supposed to, or if it's even evolved into something better or different or whatever, then it's, it, it means a lot to me. But if it ain't nothing that, you know, that it was, that it was, or it's supposed to be, then it don't mean shit to me. <laughs> but you got to have fun because you know why? Having fun is what it's all about. And yeah, I've, being, uh, being told what to do isn't, isn't fun. Yeah. You know, you know, honestly, like, the, you know, it's fucking stupid. I, I don't even want to say this because people are going to think I'm fucking retarded, but uh, Dan Lee has really helped me a lot with that. <laughs> that dude fucking, that dude was... Hold on, you're breaking up. Was, <laughs> has he been taking it? Has he... Is, what's that? That, v, that VP sign back there glowing. I think he's being controlled <laughs> right now. Yeah, dude. He fucking, he, he was sending me messages. I mean, dude, for the last... Oh, last six eight months or a year he's been sending me messages like every couple of days and he's just like ain't no fucking point if you're not having fun motherfucker and he was like don't you miss when you had fun i was like i'm like leave me alone i'm trying to do my job and then he, he fucking he just made sure i knew about it every time and then then he was like i'm gonna start inviting you to races and i'm gonna start I'm going to stay on you until you fucking go to a race and remember why you did it and remember what it's for and remember why you, the way you felt and shit. And dude, I mean, this is coming from a guy whose profile picture is like him butt naked in a pair of boots or something. You know what I mean? Like, like that oh, that's guy. Dan. That's Dan. Huh? That's Dan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but dude, honestly, man, like, I don't think he'll ever understand how much that helped me. You know what I mean? Like that made a big difference in the way I, the way I felt about shit, to be honest. Yeah, and old Limpy, he's still out here doing doing. Can you imagine stuff. if Dan went to work somewhere and they told him what to do? Fuck that. That's why Dan. I I tell Dan what to do because. Well, yeah, I mean that's different, you know. But like California, like my from California coming in telling Dan what to do at a street race. Yeah. <laughs> well, the good thing about Limpy is he's still he's still kicking it in them streets. Oh yeah, no, Limpy still got a hold on him. Everybody knows it too. And, Everywhere and I go, people Limpy really still remind fun. me. They Limpy make sure to remind me that Limpy's fucking Limpy's the real big chief. And I'm like, I know, motherfucker. I ain't, I, 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 ain't, I ain't nobody. I'm Limpy. Oh boy, we got some spammers. I think. Oh, we got some webcams. Oh, web webcams. Is that you, Jackie? No. Webcam. <laughs> this hot go. girls webcam. Oh, I just time. blocked it. I just blocked it. There you go. Oh, can I get rid of them? Oh yeah, he's getting he's getting rid of them. They got what? The band stick. He got the band stick out. Do you remember? Do you remember uh, the the good old days, the uh, the forum days, uh, when we used to have the private or the 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 street section invite only, uh, invite only, blah blah. Yeah, kind of like private pages are on Facebook. Yep. Now, but, oh yeah. yeah, dude. I mean, I fucking if they say that uh, if they say the imitation is the biggest form of flattery or whatever, then you know, you were obviously my fucking idol because I did, you know, I did everything you did. If you change the colors on your fucking uh, bulletin thing, your whatever, PHBB, remember? Mm -hmm. What was it called? PHBB, uh, whatever that meant. But yeah, if you change the colors on your shit, the theme, because it was all themes, you know, if you changed yours to the fucking dark and wretched theme or whatever, then I was looking for one that was close to it. Like, yeah, no, it was, uh, you, you fucking, you ruled it, man. You you did it. Like you fucking you you changed the whole format of the way street racing went down. You know what I mean? And if you think about the word, just think about the words cash days. Think about that. That's the gayest you know? fucking name in the world. Hey, dude. And in the beginning, when when I heard it, I was like, wow, good thing that one's not gonna stick because that fucking sucks. Cash days. Like what the fuck? Like, Some name I pulled then, out of my ass. And then, dude, look at it, hey, dude. There's a cash oh, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be like that. It wouldn't be that if it if y'all didn't mention it on the show and shit. Bullshit! Like yeah. What? Are you crazy? Yeah. The reason, yeah. only reason we mentioned it on the show is because it was that you know because it was big. It was Cash Days. Like, no, nah, it ain't the show. The show ain't why Cash Days is big. 
the cash is as big as because of what it is like you think just think about it outside of the show think about it outside of everything out there think about what cash days is and it's you know it's the thing that movies are made of you know what i mean like it's just like all the movies get made about not street racing but it's about like all the movies get made about poker games that are underground poker games going on in the city all these guys get together and they they text each other their locations and you know or it, you know it's it's you know poker games or fucking uh what's the other shit they do uh all the shit in the movies basically is like it's all like that you know there's this secret underground thing going on you know underground and everybody makes it happen and nobody tells anybody and then that's what it is that's what we were really doing when i heard about it i was like what i was like for real and then i was like where do they how do they get to all the fucking cars in the same place at the same time like i can't even i can't even get flip to follow me to the store like how how is he gonna get all you guys to fucking be at the same place at the same time to race? Like, you know, and, and then but we learned different, you know, because up here trying to get a race off was fucking hectic, dude. You know, and the guys that were above us or the yeah, guys that were older than us that were racing here that were doing it, they weren't really doing it like you. They were doing it their way, which was you roll out together, you know, and like you roll out both cars and there would be all the people that want to watch behind and you go down uh second fourth or route 66 39th street and you'd roll out over the bridge and then you both stop and then you know, somebody get out and fucking flag it and they would do it right there in the fucking street you know and then when we went that that's how i was like how are they getting anything done like that you know how are you going to get 20 cars done like that because if we had two races we just have the two behind them you know what i mean and then one, but we never two. had finished we never had finish lines or anything so like you know still to this day there are arguments like did Tuffy ever really beat Brennan or whatever? Did did Dave ever really beat fucking this guy? You know, like still to this day, everybody can argue who won or lost. When we went to fucking uh, Dallas is when we realized like, oh shit, I get it. You know, and I just got the idea from Houston. You know, because we I know that's there. what's crazy. What's crazy is that everybody's like, oh, Chief stole everything from Limpy, right? And Limpy made it all up himself. And I'm like, he kind of. He kind of did, but like, you know, I put, I, I kind of got put my, his spin on it. Yeah. I put, yeah, I, yeah. I seen how they were doing shit and I was like, well, we can do it like that, but I want to do it like this. Yeah. What happened to that dude though? Because we went back down there the next year and he fucking did. It was nothing like that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, here's, here's, a, uh, was there ever a standout rule that the producer thought was good? was good but was there ever a standout rule that the producers thought was good but it gave good street racers an easy advantage when things moved away from real street race spots i guess going from uh going to virgin road i guess i don't know hmm. i'm not sure about that one for the yeah, for the most part, production didn't, uh, they didn't, they've never, that's one good thing. That's one thing that was good about it. They never really uh, tried to get into the uh, competition rules. You know what I mean? They were, they were more about getting their part done, which was like time, you know, so like they have to get so much done in so much amount of time, or we have to go do this location, or we have to go to that location. So like, you know, they were never really about, like you know making rules on the street or burnouts or burnout lines or nothing like that like you know they were pretty solid about all that stuff but it was the <clears throat> but it did suck that there was situations where you know because of schedule or timing or production stuff we end up on you know some road we shouldn't be on racing for somebody we shouldn't be racing you know what I mean? but that's life you know we were always cool with it because it was as long as next week we get to race where we want to race, you know what I mean, and do our thing here, then we don't care what happens over there, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, somebody had a good question. Uh, yeah. Uh, what race would you be, would be your unicorn race and where? Just like in general, I mean, uh, yes, just Burka, probably Burka, yeah. you know, uh, Burka Cup, probably in the finals. 
huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Any race that I'm in the final, <laughs> cash days. You know, honestly, cash days is the one that really matters. But uh, you know, just I don't know if that one's ever coming. Yeah, but it will be. It will be. Now you're uh, back. Now you're back. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, you know, Burka Cup is probably up there at the top. You know, Burka or, or the Open um, or. Uh, Hell, I'd be cool with winning the Valhalla Cup or what are the other ones? One, one's, one's big tire and one's small tire, isn't it? Valhalla Cup is small tire, but uh, traditional or back, I don't know about now, right now, but I know back then, Burger Cup was big tire and Stockholm was, was big tire. Or I kind, think of, it was. kind of like a run with your bro. Yeah, but then they, they did the, but then one of them did small tire. Burka, I think, may have went small tire for a while. I can't remember, but. Uh, mm -hmm. But then there's the Valhalla Cup, which I know is small tire. And then um, there was one that was called like Stang or Strang, Strangy or something. But but then they also have races that like uh, be whatever that track is. They have a track there, a couple tracks there that they race at. So any honestly, anything over there is, you know, that's a big deal to me. But it's also a big deal to do it, you know. So, yeah. I'm gonna concentrate on American cash days for now and see what see where that takes me, you know. And hey, but luckily they have one every hour. So yeah, I, they're every <laughs> everything. And there's hey, and you know what? They're claiming them. There's motherfuckers out there telling me you haven't won a cash days, but I have. And I was like, which cash days did you win? And then they tell me about the one in Tuscaloosa or whatever that, that his buddy was flagging last night. I'm like, oh okay, well yeah, sorry, yeah you did it, my bad. I want to win an OG cash. I want to win, a, you know, the real one, you know. But yeah. Uh, so. But I, th I think I missed my prime. I think I was in my prime here the last couple of years, and uh, I was doing the TV show deal. So I don't know if I'll ever get that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's like riding a bike, man. You just. You know, <laughs> just it just, it just everything falls into place. Man. I hope not, because Jackie can't ride a bike worth a fuck. So we'll. Oh, We'll be screwed. He said cash days like riding a bike. <laughs> Are you going to try to get into the the sketchy stiff, the, the sketchy surfaces and back of the track stuff? And, and Dude, I mean, I have no, I have no, uh, first of all, I have no desire to try and go to the shittiest road I can find, but Jackie does. And so I've been thrown into that. Like, I don't know what her fucking problem is. She, she ain't worried, right? She really wants to go. She said, I've been following your ass around for years. <laughs> she, she really wants to go. You know, she she likes the, the shittier the surface. She wants to go to the shittiest asphalt possible. She likes that shit. And I don't, you know, I, yeah, I don't know why, but she likes it. So whatever. I'm down for whatever, you know, the way I look at it. As long as it's fucking street and it's gangster, and let's go do it. There you go. All right. Well, do you got any... Uh you got any sponsors or anybody you want to give a shout out to a plug or, 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 or yeah, I, man, I, I didn't you know, know how, long, how long you have or how long you're gonna be on so i just figured no i don't know I'm, I'm down i just wanted to be on the fucking show man shit i've been trying to get on this show. i had to i had to send limpy messages on facebook said, man whose dick do i gotta suck to get on your fucking podcast bro like we've been knowing each other 20 fucking years i can't get on your deal and he Sorry. said that'd be mine and i was like oh, okay my bad jackie handle it <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, as far as sponsors go, like, I've never really done the sponsor thing. You know what I mean? I have really good friends of mine that help me with stuff, you know. And, but, like, you know, David Butler at Butler Performance, you know, he's been there for me since day one, since, like, the fucking beginning, very first show, very first episode, you know what I mean? So guys like that, you know, they mean a lot to me. But, but also – they mean a lot to me and I mean a lot to them. And so like, I don't have to thank them in every video either, you know, cause it's not that kind of relationship. It's more of a friendship that, you know, you know, if you need something for me, I'll be there. He knows that. What? The Darlington? Huh? Oh, I said, thanks for your Darlington spot. I said, ugh. Oh, he got your Darlington spot? <laughs> yeah, Jackie had a spot in that Darlington race and didn't make it. So we gave it to somebody. <laughs> yeah, because of Street Outlaws. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck them mm. people. Uh, I just I joke people. I joke. Huh? What do you say? I said, uh, oh, you said street outlaws. I said fuck them people. Oh yeah, I know Lumpy's not a big street outlaws fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh yellow no, belly, like, man. I not, forgot about yeah. I forgot about the gut, dude. The gut is like always been at the top of my list, you know. But you never been? 
No, I've never been. And I've never been on purpose either because I, I, I didn't want to go until I had a car that was worthy of going there or until I was working on a car. Too. Like, I didn't want to go with my shit, you know. My shit was like, well, for a while, my shit was too slow. And then I felt like it was too nice. And I felt, you know, so it was like, you know, I want to go there with like, the Elko was perfect for that. You know, that, that's the kind of car you go. That's what we built that car for is to go to the gut, you know. But like. I remember when I found out about that place. Uh, you remember that kid uh, that raced with us? What was the name? Chase something. Had long hair. Skinny kid. Used to wear a yellow, yellow belly shirt all the fucking time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, God. He was kind of a pothead, but he was cool as fuck. I know. Who's that pot. kid? I ain't nothing wrong with pot. Pretty no, ain't nothing wrong with pot. It's legal. Wrong. It's legal. Well, it it is I'm legal, from. damn it. It's, yeah. it's not where I'm from, but it, it better, <laughs> fucking better be. <laughs> Yeah, that dude was, uh, he, when he was wearing a shirt, I was like, damn, that's the coolest shirt I've ever seen, you know? And then we were talking about it. And, like, dude, that place is magic, magical. But there was, for a while there, it wasn't that cool, too. I remember there was a couple times we were in Texas that we were going to go, and you and some of the other guys were like, man, it's lost all that. Like, whoever had it at the time, or whoever was dealing with it or running it or managing it or whatever, it kind of fucked it all up, so. Yeah. They've, they've done some improvements and stuff now, so. After last weekend, I was seeing some draggy times, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah it looks fast." Last weekend, it looks fast. Well, I mean, all we did was made them do water burnout. I mean, I, I I'm a, I'm a big firm believer. If if you're going to in front side of the track, it should everybody do water? Oh yeah, it, it evens the playing field. If you're going back yeah. to track, you know, pour your own puddle. So yeah, yeah, unless and, unless like unless, unless it's a shitty like track. Scrape, if they scraped it down to the bare nuts, then you can yeah. uh, then puddles or whatever. But like. Yeah, if you're at a front side, regular ass track, no prep, whatever, then yeah, water. And honestly, you're faster with water anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that it, place it, was, it, it, it came was around. Fun. Yeah. I was watching rolling. on, uh, I always watch Lookout's live feeds and because he's entertaining, you know. Man, there's a lot of live feeds out there I watch. And it's like, if I'm working, I can watch them. But with Lookout's, if I'm like tired and like trying not to go to sleep, I watch the lookouts because he's like singing and acting stupid and stuff on there. Look out, look out, look out, look yeah, out. Look out, look out. And he does the, the, the news news guy voice, you know. Here we got a little Mustang here. It's like him and his buddy with the turbo kit. Like it's fucking cracking me up. That guy kills me. Uh, you gave me Jackie Squat at Darlington. <laughs> yeah. If you were in a cash days final, who would you want to line up against? I've been in a cash days final, Meta King. Come on, dog. What you mean? I was in the final with uh, all the greats, really. I was in final. I've been in a final with. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've been in a final with Sean. I was in a final with Kai. I was in a final with Dave. I was in two or three finals with Dave. Uh, I've been in a final with who else? <laughs> she said, "Yo, mama." <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was somebody else too. I was in a final with somebody one time that I thought. If I lose this, I should quit racing. And then I lost it, of course. But you know me, you will stubborn me. I didn't quit racing. Now, I've been in a lot of finals, so. I still remember that old spot behind the, the truck stop across from B&R. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, hey, you know what's crazy is that I have won a fucking cash day. So I won a cash day at that spot with my RC car two years ago. Or last year, whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah, me and my boys race RC cars and shit. And so I went to, they, they had a race over there and uh, it was too late for my boys to go. So me and uh, the homie that used to, remember the kid who flagged races here? I was going to see Kid Rock. Remember yeah. when he short flagged boosted and they about killed him? Because <laughs> Booger was racing and Kid Rock and Booger were buddies. And Booger and Kid Rock fucking gave him the, gave him the short because it was a turbo flag, you know? Like yeah. back then, turbos took forever to spool. And so Booger went in, he pulled up boosted. And then as soon as he stopped boosting, he fucked, bam, chunked his arms down. Bam, boosted was pissed about that. But yeah, me and uh, Kid Rock, we went to, we were racing RC cars together. <laughs> and I yeah. won a cash days. And they even said, too, they're like, hey, you finally won a cash days. And I was like, oh, God damn, don't tell anybody. Because <laughs> if I was a big chief hater, I'd post that. that, that he, I'd be like, look, he finally won a cash days and holding his little toy car like a fucking bag or whatever. Sorry, sorry. Somebody We're going post, too long. This is too long. I, I some, can't. Somebody post. Up. Somebody asked if uh, Jackie wears the pants in the family. She don't wear pants. Oh. <laughs> uh, Jackie doesn't have to do a lot. Yeah. 
you tell me the, she does she lay them out and she tell you which one you're wearing and you just put them on like like oh no no she just makes fun of me all day because i don't wear clothes that match no <laughs> no she doesn't tell me what to wear no but she'll tell me she'll look at me sometimes she'll go holy shit how are you not are you sure you're not colorblind like yeah or i'll well or i'll well i'll well, wear too many colors sometimes it's just like two colors is all you get two well i'm colorblind that's why i wear black you know <laughs> black shorts black shoes black are shirt. you really colorblind yeah really yeah i, ain't gonna lie. I didn't know that yeah huh things that's you didn't crazy. know about lippy He's, no, he's I fucking... can't wait to use that though. The next time you try and say I jumped or something, like a colorblind motherfucker can't see shit. All right, it's hard to see. You got a light and you got a tire crack. Yeah, we're good. We got it. We yeah, got I think you. you're good. We are good. Yeah. Uh, so they tried to say Dave was colorblind back in the day when I first started hanging out with Dave. He like he was in the army or whatever, and he got out and he said that they said that he was colorblind. I was like, what the fuck? You're wiring my car, dog. How are you colorblind? That's why I don't wire. Well, my extended wiring is as uh, red as hot and black as ground. And that's it. That's, that's, that's all I. That's all I know pretty about. Good. But pretty I got to figure out which one's red and which one. Well, I know which one's black. But oh, what do you say? What that? What oh, I was reading something. I thought it said Sean Wilhoyt. I couldn't. Get, I couldn't read it fast enough though. So. Yeah. Olympian chief. Oh shit. Sean John Wilhoyt knows all you know all that. Sean Wilhoyt's been around since I've been around, you know. He was there. Oh Vetman. Vetman. Yeah, Vetman is what I call him. Yeah. I, I called him that at your race, the last race uh, yeah. down there. He I did was too. racing. And I was there like, who's he racing? And I was like, he's racing Vetman. They're like, who the fuck is Vetman? I was like, God damn, I'm old. Fuck. Like we, we still call people by their their screen names. Yeah, we still call them by their original street name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, all right. I, I'll let you get get going. I know you're you're a busy, man. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks, homie. Thanks for having me. Jackie, keep him in line. Oh, she will. She'll make. Well, I mean, she, she doesn't keep me in line, but she makes fun of me when I step out of the line, which helps. You know, well, that, some people, everybody's motivated differently. That's 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 keeping you in line. Yeah. Hopefully, we get to put this fucking badass Corvette on somebody soon. So, and then we get Jackie's car back. We're gonna be out there. So. Oh. Oh, look, look, look. But if but guys, let me know. Oh, there's my darling right there. I had him on. I had him on one time, uh, and Cooper just was showed like, up "As I'm leaving, like a prick. He showed like a callus. He shows up when the work's done. He did a big cheap on you. <laughs> he did. He did. He pulled a big cheap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I love Boosted, man. Boosted is a uh, man. There's there's been some times, you know, with that motherfucker, but. I like Boost. I still actually have, out of everybody, I probably talk to him more than just about anybody. Him and I, uh, Kai, I talked to Kai a bunch. Joey Heichel. Oh, yep. No, I gotta go. That's my cue, guys. I gotta go. It said waiting. <laughs> Beater bomb put dot 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 waiting. Yeah, I bet you are, my fucker. You ain't gonna <laughs> get no cherry by beating me, Beater bomb. Huh? Jackie said he's already beat me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. Oh shit. All right. Well, thanks for having me, big dog. Uh, uh all the guy, all the people that are watching though, if y'all are in on the fucking scene, there's five thousand people watching this. No uh really? Wow. Okay, well, all the people that are watching, if there's you only five. In, there's only if five there's only five people, that makes more sense. It's like my mom, Corbin, <laughs> my mom. your mom. <laughs> uh if you guys got an in on the street races, on the illegal street races that are going down. Man, shoot me an email, racebigchief at gmail, and let me know because no one's telling me. <laughs> Dude, I tell everybody, I'm like, hey, man, let me know if you got something going on. Maybe I need to come up with an email like that. Yeah, see, there you go, get you an email. Uh, what would it be? Uh, Limpy the real race master. No. Limpy the real race master at gmail. <laughs> Limpy's a dumbass, colorblind <laughs> motherfucker at gmail.com. Uh, is that too many words? Is that how many letters? Said, you get? Look out! Look out! Let me know too. See, look, look, out, look, look out, out right there. Look out! Look, look out, out! Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! He said, "You." He said, "You on my YouTube?" That girl was like, "Huh?" And he's like, <laughs> "Okay." And he walked off. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me know want, if y'all got a race They don't want you there because you're too fast. You're too fast. Because you're too fast. Oh, oh, set it up. Frig. Oh, fuck. Frig? Yeah. See, no. See, see what happens at ten. What time is it? 
9.5. Yeah, so you get close to 10 o'clock, all the fucking real hitters start coming out. So that's why I told Limpy I had to be off here by 9.30 because I didn't want to be on here when Frig and all them come in here. Now we got Beater Bomb and Frig, like, boosted. I mean, oh, dude, there's, who? There's Casey Max. Hold on. Yeah, fuck that. See, I'm out. <laughs> 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 who else is uh, out there fucking smashing people? Oh. Who's going to win that? Who's going to win match race? What do you think? Who you got? I don't know. I don't know who's who's in it. Me neither. No idea. Is it gonna put you on a real road or a real whatever you want? I told them I don't give a fuck. Them, them roads over there make a man out of you. Really good. That's what oh, I like. I, need, I wish I, I've been trying to be a man for so long. I've been trying to grow into a man. Some of some of them roads that keep you honest. Like you're like we're going down this fucking sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> really that bad, huh? It's kind of like remember that road down in uh down in Houston. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Where the dude yeah. went over the tree and he thought he could fly and <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Something like that. I remember that. That was but, called the Black Horror. That car was called the Black Horror. Yeah, you know, I think they were name from them like they used to. They were from Kentucky too. Yeah, they, they were from Louisville, or I think. Yeah, they're from the hood. They're probably from where I'm from. They're probably from Roofer Street over in the Highlands. <laughs> <laughs> they're wow. probably related. Wow. All right. Well, uh, appreciate you coming on. Yep. Yep. And, uh, uh, anything you want to say? Fuck everybody. Nah, I'm good, brother. Thank you for having me. Fuck well, bye. Fuck the haters. <laughs> Fuck the haters. <laughs> yep. Thanks. Uh, I say thanks to the haters, man. Every time they comment, I get more more money. Uh, appreciate it. Well, you know, if they're hating, then they're they're watching you. Oh yeah. Now, as long as they know who I'm, I don't care if they're good with it or bad with it. You know, what I mean, listen, I'm good with it. I still got your name in their mouth. Yeah, that's right. All right, fellas. Thank you very much. Right. I'm out. Later. Appreciate him coming on. And uh, like I said, we'll be in. Oh, wait, that's not it. We'll be here next weekend. I might go out to the gut tomorrow night. Uh, go out to the gut, go live, and uh, we'll go out live. Go hang out with Lookout and Murder. And uh, that's about it. Hope you all enjoyed it. And we'll see y'all later.